It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat's here. Mary Jo Foley's here. Lots to talk about, including something Microsoft calls the Windows Feature Experience Pack. Paul and Mary Jo will explain what the heck that's all about. Now that Slack is being sold to Salesforce, what does this mean for Teams? And Paul breaks down game streaming. What's the best choice? It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Windows Weekly comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Securing every access point in your company does not have to be a challenge. LastPass unifies access and authentication to make securing your employees simple and secure, even when they're working remotely. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 701, recorded December 2nd, 2020. The Bailiwick of Guernsey. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Wasabi Hot Cloud Storage. Thinking about moving your data storage to the cloud? Wasabi is enterprise-class cloud storage at one-fifth the price of Amazon S3 and faster than the competition with no fees for egress or API requests and no complex storage tiers. Start a free trial at wasabi.com. Don't forget to use the code WINDOWS. And by Bandwidth. Bandwidth understands the challenge enterprises face when migrating to direct routing for Microsoft Teams. That's why Bandwidth launched Duet for Microsoft Teams, the only complete solution for direct routing and Microsoft certified E911, available direct from a carrier designed to simplify your team's migration. Request your proof of concept at bandwidth.com slash WW. And by Technology Powers X. Learn how technology and IT departments are reshaping their businesses through an original podcast from Dell Technologies. Search for Technology Powers X anywhere you listen to podcasts and download each episode today. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover the latest news from Microsoft with two of the best, I dare say the best, Windows journalists in the business. Mary Jo Foley from uh, ZDNet, a Red Ventures company. <laughs> uh, uh, all about Microsoft.com. Hello. Your, your email changed, right? No, mine no. did not because okay. I'm not on staff. So my, but ah, everybody else's, yes, all the did staff. change to Red yeah, Ventures. They're all yep. redventures.com. They are. Wow. That's uh, uh, ooh. <laughs> a little <Yeah>. whiplash. <laughs> also with us, Paul Thorat. He is, uh, of course, the eponymous blogger at <laughs> Thorat.com. Yes. <laughs> Eponymous. Yes, Are you eponymous or the site is eponymous? I believe the site is eponymous. I don't know. I should never ask. This is like, this is like, <laughs> what is the sound of one hand clapping, Paul? Yeah. And, and, yeah. <laughs> we'll hear from him in an hour or two. I feel like I should know the answer to that question. And I I'm believe like, the site is the eponymous throughout.com. Eponymously tight. Yeah. So the. I believe that's the case. You can't yeah, be eponymous. You are Thorat. I am. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the eponymously titled website. <laughs> Which formerly known as the Rot. Yeah. Next anyway. year I'm going to go by a symbol. Congratu I'm Thank you, Micah Sargent, for uh, filling in last week. He got the honor of doing episode 700. Congratulations to both of you for 700 episodes. Gonna say he didn't seem that impressed, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, these kids today. Jaded youth. Mm. Jaded youth. <laughs> Good luck getting 700 podcasts under your belt, kids. That's not an easy uh, thing. That's that's what sure. is that? Twelve years, thirteen years? It's uh, it's not I mean, insignificant. We keep doing this, but I I, I want to say uh, end of two thousand six. Yeah, I mean, I can I can find out. I think it was late two thousand six. I have the technology. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been on for ten of the years, not oh, all of them. That's so. what amazes me too, because I still think of you as the yeah. new kid. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 Oh yeah, uh, yeah. She's the new one. But no, yeah. ten years. Ten years. Yeah. I know. Anyway, it's kind great. Of astounding. Beginning our new uh, second era of uh, Windows Weekly with 701, and we're doing it uh, without the help of Skype for the first time in mm -hmm. 13 years. I am scared. It was 2006, <laughs> by the way. 2006. September 28th, 2006. Oh, so we missed your 14th anniversary. 
So you're a teenager now, Paul. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm, I'm through the squeaky voice years. <laughs> oh, hello, welcome to Windows. I was kind of wondering if you wanted to go to the dance. So we um, <laughs> we've been looking for an alternative <laughs> alternative to uh, Skype, uh, especially since I don't know what the long term future holds for this product. Yeah. Um, right. And we found an open source tool called OBS Ninja. It's at OBS Ninja. That really is just a WebRTC. Uh, there's, there's not a whole lot to it. Um, and we're using it today. I think it's going to be our new go-to. I like the idea of not being tied to any particular company or technology. Uh, open source is nice. and uh, this, It makes me feel a little funny on the inside, I'll does be it? honest. But well, you know, <laughs> it's part of the new Linux world you're in, Paul. Jeez. True. Mm -hmm. Yes, everything mm -hmm. has to be a gut punch. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, thanks to Steve Seguin, who's the guy who wrote this uh, on on top of open source uh, technology, and uh, I think it's really it pretty cool. You're used. You're using. Good. Are you both using Credge to do this? I yes. am. It's in yep. your browser, mm -hmm. which is also kind of amazing. So, um, and we think yeah. that the audio quality be better. We know that we can all talk at the same time now. I know, yep. that's handy. Yep. Very. Now my 14 years of experience talking over people is useless. <laughs> Shut the hell. It's come to an end. <laughs> oh, no. It's the end of an era, folks. The gong works yes. either way. Oh, no. <laughs> no so, this is, uh, this is fun. This is pretty cool. Anyway, yeah. I missed you. Thank you, Micah. Um, we're back mm -hmm. in the saddle. I'm back in the saddle. Or in my case, the bouncy ball. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, ready to talk a little bit about uh, Winders. Um, what should we start Still with? Still a thing. When should we start it with is. Winders? We mm -hmm. should. All right, Windows Ten. Yeah, um, let's start with something super confusing. The feature because, pack. I mean the yeah, plus that pack. Makes sense. I mean the. <laughs> I think what we're is gonna, it? <laughs> what is no, it? I think we're going to bring this one home because actually I think this makes sense once you understand yeah, what's happening. It does. Okay. Yeah. Microsoft it says does. they're not going to be doing big updates anymore. They're just going to yeah, be sending no. out. They said that. No, they didn't <laughs> say that. What did they say? No. What that would have been say? nice, but no. So, I don't know if you guys remember this, but when Windows 10 2004 started being installed on people's machines. When you looked at your about, you saw this thing that said Windows Feature Experience Pack on your machine, right? And, every, and we were like, what's that? So we asked Microsoft and they said, we have nothing to say. And I'm like, wait, so you just installed something called the Feature Pack on our machines, but you won't tell us what it is. Okay. So today, well, actually yesterday, they told us finally what it is, which we already knew pretty much, but... The thing that's called Windows Feature Experience Pack is a set of features that Microsoft is putting together. And these are things that are going to be updated independently of the operating system itself. Um, so it's things like the snipping tool and some of the ink um, inking experience stuff and probably a bunch of other features too, that they're going to be able to add features and updates and enhancements to independently, which might mean faster, might mean slower, might be on a different schedule than Windows itself. The one thing they did say this week is, ultimately, after this goes through insider testing, this is going to be delivered to customers through Windows Update. So there's not going to be anything extra you have to do to get the feature experience pack updates. They'll just come to you through your regular updating mechanisms. What will they, what will they look like, though? I mean, what's, uh, is it going to say... That's a good question. Like, yep. <laughs> I, I assume it's a cumulative update, you know. It'll, so yeah, I think it, it might even like say, fe too. would it say feature pack? Maybe? It might. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It, it might. But it won't be, it's not going to come up in the critical updates. And is this, so is this instead no. of H1, H2? <laughs> no, <laughs> right, so. it's not. <laughs> okay. We got to, there's, there's so much here. Like it's, we got to kind of break this down a little okay, bit because. Good. I'll think, be think the about idiot. how mobile works. Okay. No, no. I mean, I, I no, no, I mean. It's confusing. No, this, honestly. <laughs> Microsoft has never come out and explicitly said, this is what we're doing. No. So we have to sort of figure it out. Okay. If you think about how mobile operating systems work, Android in particular, Google separated a lot of what used to be delivered as part of Android and put it into the store so they could update it more frequently. Smart, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, this is like that, right? Uh, parts of the operating system that historically have been updated only when Windows was updated. 
Um, I think there's an enterprise component to this too. I think some of this stuff is going to be optional um, for enterprises. And uh, this is a way to keep delivering updates to consumers. I don't think they're going to have the option, honestly, other than maybe 30 days of delay or whatever. But um, I think that, that there's an enterprise component to this um, too. Um, but I also have to wonder, there's a couple of uh, additional pieces, the Windows Insider program, how this impacts what we're testing in, in the different mm -hmm. channels, and also what next year's Windows uh, releases look like. You know, Mary Jo right. has spoken about the possibility that 21H1 either doesn't happen or is a minor release and the big one happens later in the year. And this, this first feature pack that they're now testing in the, I almost said slow ring, the beta channel. Beta. Yep. is what was and actually still is, which is very strange and kind of unprecedented, testing the currently shipping version of Windows 20 H2 in this case. Right. Uh, this feature pack will, is for that version of Windows, right? So they're testing it through the Insider program. Eventually, they'll finalize it, and eventually it will be released to people who have 20 H2. Mm -hmm. And I think only 20 H2, I, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, so... They still haven't clarified what's going on with the Insider program, right? By this point in time, they should have said, dev channel's doing this, uh, beta channel's <laughs> doing this, release preview channel's doing this. They've not done that. They haven't yeah. changed anything. They're all still doing the same thing they were doing before. This has never happened before. This leaves open questions about next year. Um, and then uh, yeah, Mary Jo alluded to this, but I mean, they've only mentioned two features, very minor things for this particular feature mm -hmm. pack. There almost certainly will be more, right? A, a feature, yeah. <laughs> the two features, uh, something about the snipping tool and then uh, something related to the touch uh, keyboard. Yep. Not particularly exciting, right? So no. I think right now they're just almost testing this thing, you know, this mm -hmm. feature pack or feature experience pack as a thing, I think in some ways is, is being tested now as well. Just the, the notion of updating uh, OS components yeah. outside of the OS. You know, it, it makes a lot of sense because things like the snipping tool, they aren't part of Windows, right? Like they, they aren't really yeah. the operating right. system, you know? Like I could see your phone being in here because that's not really part of the operating system, right? <laughs> well, your phone, so your phone is like literally a standalone app. It I is. Mean, the the it interesting is. thing about um, what whatever the actually it's not, it's not really they're getting rid of the snipping tool, but whatever that thing is called now, it's called sketch and snip. Sketch and snip, or screen you know, screen snip is yeah. an, uh, a quick it's action. It's got some weird name. Yeah. It's like scratch and sniff. It yeah, is. No, it really is. <laughs> they're, they're, they're changing the name of it, but but it is. It's like a. There's an app component, like there is an app, right, yeah. that runs. Yeah. But you can yeah. also access it through, um, we'll call it hooks in the UI that are part of mm -hmm. Windows. And so this, right. it, it, it's this kind of weird gray area. Um, it's obviously not a CoreOS component. It's not a core system DLL. It's nothing like that. And, uh, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm sure large chunks of the operating system will still be on this normal mm -hmm. servicing schedule. But right. it is yet another way that things can get updated in Windows 10. And that mm -hmm. should give everyone a little bit of pause. <laughs> you know, we haven't actually had a very good experience, but we still have real feature packs, or sorry, real feature updates, which are these mm -hmm. version upgrades. We have quality updates, which are bug and security fixes, cumulative updates that come out every month, sometimes up to three or four times a month. We still have app updates, which happen through the store. And now we have this new thing, uh, Windows yep. Feature Experience Pack, which is what Mary Jo said it was, uh, a yeah. way to upgrade some components of the operating system outside of the normal upgrade yeah. cadence. I hate that word. I apologize I for using it. Uh, no, the schedule. It's a whatever. word. It's a word. It's a useful yeah. word. <laughs> you know, I wonder if they're going to put Notepad in here. Just yeah. wondering sure. aloud. I mean, there's lots of things that, what, are they, what a category yeah. do they call these now in Windows? There's like a, like they're they're under their own category on Windows. Yeah, actually, um, Notepad's an interesting example because that's not a store app. Although they toyed, right. remember they were going to make it a store app. Yep. Um, and and I'm sh and and th that's not that Notepad necessarily needs to be updated more than twice a year or whatever. But if they Doesn't. wanted to, yes, uh, that's an interesting example of one that yeah could absolutely fall yeah. into this category. I would say. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Um, so as far as what's next, if you watch Twitter today, Rich Woods at NeoWin is saying he's hearing that as of next week, we could start seeing builds of the next version of Windows. Maybe. And what is the next version of Windows? Cobalt, um, which and is it, the one well, after I, I guess Iron, what I meant was, right? will it be 21H1? Oh, 
Right. So that's what we don't know, right? Like we still don't yeah. know, is there a 21 H1? Is there a small 20 H1? Is there no 21 H1? Like when is 21 H1 coming? Like, is it still going to be around the May timeframe, April, May or what? Yeah. I, and I, you know, I think know about it this way, like uh, go back in time a couple of months before 20 H2 came out. Right. So the, right. what used to be the fast ring, which mm -hmm. is now the dev channel is it turned into this kind of nebulous thing. It's not yeah. two versions out. It's it's features that will may or may not appear in some future version of Windows 10. And we exactly. saw that this past summer that some of those features actually did appear in 20H2, which was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, they didn't seem like a big deal, so why not ship them sooner rather than later? Um, some of the stuff they're testing now because 20H2 is out will have to come out in some version that's shipping next year, whatever that version may be. We don't know. Mm -hmm. It's not tied to a version, so that's unique. Yeah. Um, but once 20, and I'm sorry, I should say the slow ring or the, um, the beta channel was testing 20 H2, yep. 20 H2 ship publicly. They're still testing 20 H2. And what that means now is two things, yeah. uh, cumulative updates, quality updates to 20 H2, which is by the way, not a horrible idea, you know, test them yeah. with a beta group, uh, make sure the mm -hmm. quality is there, then ship them to the public. That's yeah. fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's mm -hmm. just, we've never done it before. And now we have this notion of a, uh, a feature experience pack, which is yet another way of mm -hmm. updating or upgrading uh, the currently shipping version of Windows, which again, you know, 20H2. Yep. So we're in kind of uncharted territory here. <laughs> you know, we've got this. We are. <laughs> uh, and, it, you know, all Microsoft would have to do is put out a little blog post, like, here's oh, what I we're know. thinking and this is what we're doing. And I know we did things uh, a certain I way know. for the past two years and maybe we're going to do things a little differently next year. I but know. Maybe we'll silence. get that next week. I'm kind of hoping. Okay. We I will. hope so. Because, um, so. like, you know, a lot of times they'll be like, you know, what? we'll tell you when you need to know. Like, don't worry. We'll, yeah. When it's time <laughs> yes. for you to know, don't you'll worry, know. Don't worry, you pretty little head. <laughs> right. But you know where that doesn't apply? That yeah. doesn't apply in IT land because right. businesses need to know, right? Like, they need to know, like, about up to a year in advance, like, just so they can plan. They need to know, is 21H1 coming? Is 21H2 going to be the bigger update instead of, or the smaller update yep. this time or the bigger update? They need to know all these things, right? It's not too early to tell people about this. And, um, <laughs> I don't remember this too, too well, but from a historical perspective, um, my, back when we had service packs, right? Windows mm -hmm. would be serviced by service packs. Yeah. Uh, there were things like option packs, which only existed for a little oh, while. Yeah. The IIS was yeah. originally delivered to Windows mm -hmm. NT as part of the NT option pack uh, yep. at, with some other things before it turned into uh, Windows 2000. And I believe there was at least one feature pack uh, back in the day as well. And yeah. it was the same idea, you know, different era, yep. but same thought was, well, we have this release cadence yep. again, sorry, for servicing Windows. At the time, it involved these service packs, which were cumulative updates. And, um, but what if we want to deliver features in the meantime? Like, how do we, yeah. how do we do things midstream, you know? And so they, they've yeah. been kind of toying with this I know. idea in many, I mean, the, the anti-option pack has to date back to nine, I mean, I don't know, 96, yeah. 97, something like yeah. that, 1997, I bet. Now, do you remember the whole controversy around should service packs contain feature, new features or just yeah. fixes. That was a right. big controversial thing, right? And that's when they came out with the idea of a feature pack, which was different from a service pack, right? But this new right. feature experience pack has nothing to do with that old model at all. I don't Well, think. other than conceptually, because I think I, I do think yeah. the one thing that is the, is the same or is similar or whatever is this businesses have always been in this position where we're, we we understand we need to take security and bug fixes, right? We'll do that mm -hmm. on our own schedule, but we right. know those have to come. Yep. We're not looking for new features, you know? Mm -hmm. We're not. Yep. Um, someday in the future, we'll upgrade to some future version of Windows and you can give us those features then. Like, we don't want to add yep. features to this thing. It requires mm -hmm. training. We don't want to go through that. Right. And I, I again, they have, <laughs> we can only speculate here because they have never literally said this, but when you look at what this Windows feature experience pack is, you can imagine there being a business or an enterprise component to it where they say, look, this is mm -hmm. going to be an optional upgrade, update. Mm -hmm. This is going to be something you as a, an admin can say, no, we're not doing. You know, mm -hmm. My, I'm, I'm guessing. I just want to I know, we're all, that, it, it, we're all guessing. We're all guessing. But it seems, it seems like that's the part of the point of it. Yeah. I think, just to, just to sound like a broken record, they could have said a little more about it in the blog post about it this week. <laughs> you think? 
you know, like communicate a little I, more about like what this is, what the heritage of it is, why they're doing it. That would have all been kind of interesting. And the useful. fact that they've been kind of doing it quietly for a while yeah. now and have never literally explained it in any way, shape, right. or form is. I know. I don't know. No, I just, I, I thought it I, was maddening. I thought it was maddening when we get 2004 and they installed the feature mm -hmm. experience pack and then they wouldn't say what it was. I'm like, so guys, like right, I know right. it's, it's kind of my PC because you own the operating system and I'm right. just borrowing it from you, but still, come sure. on. I want to know what's on here. <laughs> yeah, it's a reasonable and request yeah. and, and uh, uh, from a individual or a business, you know, yeah. why, why wouldn't yeah. you want to know what I this know. thing is? I, I We've, you know, we, there, at the time, I know. Well, at the time it came out with 2004, we were speculating a lot about what it had to do with the Windows shell and the composable shell because yeah. it says in the description or somewhere that we saw that it had Windows 10 shell components in the experience pack. So that was like, oh, wait, are they still trying to do that old idea of having this Windows Core OS with different shells that could snap on and off? But I don't think this has anything to do with that either. I don't. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, let's just hope they're listening and that maybe next week we'll hear a little more in depth about what's next for the insiders and for the mainstream users with Windows 10 feature updates. That would be nice. Right. That would be nice. I'm being an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh are you thoroughly confused yeah, now? Yeah, crystal clear. Yeah, so are we. <laughs> <laughs> but I well, guess I, I get maybe. it. I mean, Nepal did make a good point. I mean, I guess I yeah. get it. I just mm -hmm. don't get why. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Well, I, I honestly, from the perspective of the company that makes the platform, right, Microsoft in this case, or Google with Android or Apple with iOS, I mean, you have these ways that you update the system and... and you know, I just use a different example. It's like iOS, right? iOS 14.2.1 or whatever yeah, comes out. Yeah, they don't and give it cute names. <laughs> no, I know. But that, that particular update requires, it. you know, the phone reboots, all this stuff happens. Like, this is a way to get outside of that big, heavy update right. system, you know? Right. And um, these things but aren't necessarily standalone mobile apps. That big, heavy update system is of Microsoft's own making. Oh yeah, yeah. It is. Of course. Okay. It totally is. Okay. No, but it's <laughs> just but, I mean No, but it's the same on iOS and Android. Like it it's well, not exactly. Once a no, year there's that big update. Yeah. Uh and then the rest of the time there's just uh there's updates. Well no, I, actually see I'm not sure so that's true that's true of Android, but on iOS, when you go from iOS thirteen to fourteen, or from fourteen to fourteen, no, there's a reboot. The upgrade is yeah. the same. It's the same yeah, yeah. it's a big and upgrade. That, that, I agree, and that reboot is annoying. Yeah, um, I don't know. So this is just you know the, these these guys these companies they all have the same. It doesn't matter whose fault it is or whatever, but I mean they all have the yeah. same need. It's like look, we we want to be able to update things, but we don't want to increment the OS. You know. Yeah, but it only seems um, that Microsoft needs to name it, like to dis distinguish. <laughs> this is a critical update. Yeah. This yeah. is a feature yeah. update. This is a feature pack. This is. Sure. I mean, I don't. I don't know if that yeah, no, crystallizes <laughs> it for the user who just says, do I have to do this? Do I not have to do mm. this? Well, okay. So actually that's, that, by the way, that's an interesting point. So I, I, I do think from the perspective of the average user, right, who is not going into Windows Update and checking for updates and doing things and whatever. Mm -hmm. So this is something that will just kind of happen, right? So it, it, I believe that it will be like any cumulative update. Every once in a while, your computer will say, hey, we installed this thing last night or we're going to do it tonight. You're going to have to reboot, blah, 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 whatever. Like this happens. And this will just kind of happen as part of that. Um, I, I I don't think this is going to impact people like a feature update does. No. You know, that is, there's no, no out of box experience that pops up. You might want to look at your privacy settings again. Don't mm -hmm. forget about Microsoft 365. Please, dear God, use Cortana. Someone has to. All those things they do. <laughs> You're not going to see that stuff. It's just a, right. it's just an yep. update. You know? Yep. I agree. I don't think it's going to be like, hold, everybody hold on. Here comes a feature update, right? It's not going to be like that. It should, it why should. Why name it? it? <laughs> yeah, I know. You're right. The, the fact that they have to name it is, uh, like, is, yeah. If you're a farm it's so kid, Microsoft. you learn not to name the pigs before you <laughs> slaughter them. <laughs> yes, that's right. I don't know how that's that right. relates, but I'm just saying. Yeah, you don't yeah. eat Mr. Squiggly. Yeah, you don't. You, know? you don't really need to name. I mean, 
Right. I, I'm not that attached to it. Is it an update? Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess the really the am I wrong in thinking that the only thing <laughs> users really care about is is this an, a critical security patch that I must do immediately? Right, right. Or is this something I can hold off on? And that's somewhat well, blurred, I guess, because we can't deferring is like not a thing. I'm anymore. not going to defend Microsoft. I, I'll just say that we don't really know yet what, what will be in this or yeah. in future future right. packs. So we don't. it's possible that uh, the shell stuff that Mary Jo mentioned is something that will happen once Windows 10X comes out and we have a choice of shells maybe or something. I mean, it's possible this oh. this will turn into something. Oh, that's but again, interesting. But it's it, but it's up to Microsoft to explain it, and that's the yeah. right. You know, this is the <laughs> this is the complaint we always make. I, I mean, these guys they don't ever explain anything, right? You know, I know. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. There why is going to be a I don't feature. Know how you get up every day and don't explain what you're doing? <laughs> no, there is going to be a feature experience pack for Windows 10X. Like there was even a placeholder for that in the store yeah. at one point. I don't know if it's still there or not, but okay. yeah. I just think, yeah. yeah, it's weird. You know, all these years, and we're still struggling to figure out the, the best basics. way to upgrade Windows or update Windows, know. you know, uh, know, on some arbitrary schedule that, yep. uh, you know, whatever. Yep. 2020, so here we are. just to put a nail in this coffin, <laughs> um, yeah. we'll still get the twice yearly... As far as well, we know. Feature updates. See, Leo, as maybe. As far as we know. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> So this doesn't have so. This doesn't so my question I guess is does this have a third category of updates? We have the critical I updates. I would call it a fourth category of updates, but but yeah, but <laughs> but to in Windows update a third category of updates. However, I believe to the user it will be delivered and will look like a, a what they call a quality update, which is an existing yeah. type of update. It will just look like another update. Okay. I think what confuses think. this is Microsoft's desire and every company's desire. A lot of what happens in computing, especially in software, is a, a kind of a simulated newness to encourage people to update or to buy a new mm -hmm. thing or whatever. We're yeah. going to simulate somehow mm -hmm. this phone is different than the last five phones. Yeah. Oh, because it has flat edges. And yeah. it's what makes people want the new thing. And it's hard now as as hardware and software is kind of peaked to make to do something that really makes people go that's new that's different i really need mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. and uh it feels well, like mark that? there's a little marketing imperative here to say oh and look we're keeping windows shiny i know we haven't updated it's always been windows yeah. 10 but we are keeping it shiny somehow it feels like that's some of what's going on here sometimes you know sometimes you just open an app like this happened with one note today um, where it says, hey, we just, this is, we did these yeah. updates. And there's a little list yeah. of like, here's the stuff we did. And you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, and yeah. a lot of times it doesn't really impact me. It doesn't matter. I'm like, oh yeah, whatever, okay, whatever. Um, I, I, Microsoft has struggled with doing that too. Do, do they want to mm -hmm. pop up a thing and say, look, it's shiny and new. Here's a list of all the stuff that's new. I mean, um, some people want that and like it and some mm -hmm. people don't, you know, it's yeah. remember they used to have a little no uh, notification and say, hey, Windows Defender here, everything's fine. Yeah. You're like, well, why, why are you interrupting why are you me? Why telling, telling me that? that? <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> just want to let you know I'm here. Hey, yeah. I'm, I'm here. I, I got you back. That yeah. feels yeah. like There's marketing. Happening. That feels like marketing. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. You, you, try, I, yeah. you know, you're trying to straddle that line between <laughs> informing yeah. people and um, not <laughs> bothering I know. them, I guess, you know? Yeah. yeah. No, so, yeah, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think most normal people will never know they have something called the Windows Experience Feature yeah, Pack. Yeah, I think so, too. Like they'll never even know. Oh, like okay. they may look at their about on oh, there okay. sometimes and go, "Oh, what's that thing?" Right? But other but than that, but by the way, you could make an argument with the current system that they have for, the, for this year and last year, yeah. where the H one was a big deal and the H two was just a cumulative update. Mm -hmm. You could make the argument. Why don't we just call that a feature pack? I know. Call yeah. it or a feature experience pack or whatever the stupid name mm -hmm. is. Um, you know, I mean, what's the? It's not really a feature update, right? But it does have a couple of new features. Yeah. Maybe you know why they those can't new features out into a feature pack. You know why they can't do that, right? Is because of the um life cycle support wording that they yeah, have. Yeah, but why, that's but yeah. that leads to why not just change that? I mean, make the H1 yeah. the long-term one and and the feature stuff is like whatever. It's something we're going to dump yeah. that on consumers and if business want them, they can have them. But they don't have to take them. Right. You know. 
don't give him any I, more I, I, ideas. Just, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, we, uh, this is we confusing. Have to guess. We are we we're guessing. Guess. God we forbid guessing. someone ever just stand up, write a blog post, and say, "This is what we're doing." God forbid. You know what? We could do it for you, Microsoft. If you just tell I, we, us, we we'll, try to do we'll it now. Do just it tell us what you. you're doing. We'll do it. <laughs> right. I'm happy to explain it. Yeah. Well, hey, I can't, yeah, that's the question. Why did they do? Why did they announce this? What was? What's going? Yeah, on? Yeah. Why now? Right. Yeah. Because. I, my well, guess is because we're about to flip cycles, right? Like they're, right, that, we're yes. at December, right? We're in December. That's when the building of the next one ends and the starting of the future version I, I, begins. I think the problem with this is what Mary Jo said. When you, if you have 2004 and you go into the system setting thing, it actually mentions the Windows exper feature experience pack level you're at. There's a version number for it. They never, never said what it was. They never explained it. They, we asked, no one said, no, we got no comment on this. And now the Insider program puts all a little blog. Hey, we're beta testing a feature experience pack thing. It's yeah. a way to deliver features, you know, like as we described. Okay. Yep. So, <laughs> it's just this change. Like, what, why yeah. now? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. I'm not, you know, I'm not. This a, is our I'm world, not, Leo. I don't know. I'm not against I know. it. No. no. We're not against it either. It's just, it's just. We're always kind of trying to figure out, like, think in their minds, why do they do something when they do it? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> and yeah. why can't they explain it in plain yeah. English? It's all about the exactly. tea leaves. Yeah. Reading the tea leaves. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. All right. Um, now that we've read the tea leaves, let's take a break. <laughs> let's make tea and move Let's on. make some tea, have a cup, <laughs> have a cup of tea, yep. enjoy, and uh, more to come. With our fine hosts, Paul and Mary Jo. I was feeling this morning when I was getting up, gosh, I really miss Windows Weekly. Now I remember why I didn't want to get up. Uh, <laughs> I was hey, going to say, hey, I can't no. remember why I missed it. <laughs> just teasing. Just teasing. I'm just confused no. now. Yeah, no. That's what's, you know, that's what's great about this show. This show is for people who really do want to kind of parse, you know, what's going on <laughs> uh, up there on the hill in Redmond and, uh, and what, what they're thinking. And uh, it's, I'll tell you what, it's a hell of a lot easier figuring out what Microsoft's thinking than what Google's thinking, which is later yeah. today. That one's a real mess. That one's like, what the <laughs> hell were they thinking? Uh, our show today brought to you by Wasabi. Not the hot green stuff on your sushi, although that's pretty good stuff too. This is hot cloud storage. I like the name though. Wasabi is, you know... The, the, it was founded by a friend of mine, David Friend. He uh, he's a serial entrepreneur. Did Carbonite. Uh, uh, he and his uh, his buddy Jeff Flowers are really brilliant technologists. And when they see an opportunity, they they jump on it. And they're and they're and we. I want to help them because there's a little bit of a challenge here. Because what Wasabi's doing is competing with big names, Google, Microsoft, and most importantly Amazon, to provide you with cloud storage that is in every respect better than on-prem storage. And I would submit in every respect better than what the big guys are offering. It's certainly less expensive. Uh, it's about one-fifth the cost of Amazon's S3. One-fifth, 80% cheaper. Uh, it is faster. But the problem is, you know, when you go to the boss and say, look, we, uh, you know, we're going to buy another 16 terabytes of storage this month and next month and the month after that, that's expensive, that adds up. I want you to go in there and say, but boss, and by the way, that's probably the big competition is not so much S3 as, as the, the hard drives in the, in the closet. I want you to go in there and say, but, but, but boss, it says we know we're going to be buying this. Why don't we just put this stuff in the cloud where it is more secure, more reliable, um, and much, much less expensive. Wasabi is so much less expensive than on-prem storage. It actually costs less than the maintenance fees for on the typical maintenance fees for on-prem storage. But we're not even talking about the hardware. Just eliminate that. Typically, you could store data in Wasabi's cloud for less than the cost of maintenance fees and the same amount of storage. This is a really disruptive price performance uh, uh, model. And by the way, it's also a lot simpler. It's just a flat rate per terabyte per month. So you can really plan. You can think about it and you can plan. If you know, as many companies do, we do, we know we're going to create a pretty consistent amount of data every month, new podcasts. If you know, and I would say most companies are kind of like that, then you could say, uh, look, this is what it's going to cost. Uh, 
In fact, Wasabi, they have a flat rate, so you can just say that, but they also have something very cool called reserved capacity storage, where you say, I know I'm going to be using this much. I'm going to buy ahead, or I'm just going to reserve this much capacity. You're not even buying it yet. You're just reserving this much capacity. You can do it in one, three, or five-year increments. The longer the time frame, the more the, the storage, the less the cost. So you can even reduce the cost even more. If you are, like many businesses, like ours, you know, know that you're going to need this much storage over this much time. Now, the boss is going to say, all right, fine. I see it's cheaper, but I'm worried about security. If I've got the hard drives in that closet, I know where they are. I know where my data is. Yeah, but pff, honestly, <laughs> let's just think about that a little bit. First of all, that data in there is is susceptible to ransomware that's always you know you can bring that one up and the boss is going to say oh yeah uh bite his nails her nails oh yeah wasabi uh you can make your data uh immutable so it can't be changed by ransomware it, it cannot be changed by anything without jumping up through a bunch of hoops and that's beautiful that means you're storing that data and it's going to stay there for our podcast i'm not going to go up into the wasabi and change that that's that's permanent so make that immutable now ransomware can't get it uh, user error can't touch it. Okay, that's that's a big plus, right? Uh, 11 nines of durability. 11 nines. I, I don't think you can get more than that. And one of the ways they can get so high is they do active integrity checking. Every object is checked for integrity every 90 days to make sure not one bit is flipped. And if it is, Wasabi stores your data in premiered tier four data centers that are highly secure and fully redundant. So if at any point during the integrity check, it says, oh, that file's been modified, and it shouldn't have been a bit flipped or something. You got another copy in another data center. You can just restore it. That's how you get 11 nines of durability. Uh, data is always encrypted, whether you request it or not. It's encrypted at rest. That's partly uh, part of the overall thing. I mean, Wasabi follows industry best security models all across the board. They have access control mechanisms like bucket policies, ACLs. Uh, they're HIPAA compliant, FINRA compliant, CJS compliant. They're, they're almost certainly compliant with every regulation you have to do with. I, I'm trying to give you ammunition for the boss. So, boss, once again, 80% cheaper, six times the speed of the industry leader, uh, highly secure, much more reliable than on-prem, and a lot cheaper. Oh, I forgot. Also, it's it uses the Amazon S3 API, so you have a lot of tools, kind of a huge number of tools that will work with it. You already probably use some of them. And they don't charge you for API requests. Oh, the other thing, this is a big one for me. And I bet the boss, if he looks at the bill, will think this is a big one. You put stuff in the cloud, but as soon as you want it, Amazon's going to charge you. Egress fees. So annoying. And it really screws up your, your planning because it's hard to know what your egress costs are going to be. Wasabi never charges for egress. You're paying that one flat rate per terabyte per month, Period. Period. All right, I hope I've given you the ammunition you need. Boss, I got to tell you about wasabi. Go take him out to sushi. Take her out to sushi and say, hey, you see that wasabi on your plate? I got something hotter. W-A-S-A-B-I dot com. Calculate the savings for yourself and start a free trial of storage for a month. Click the free trial link. Please, if you would, use the offer code Windows. Let them know you saw it here. That really helps us. Uh, you know, they want to know that these ads work. And you are sending them a signal if you go to wasabi.com. And do the free trial for a month. Use the offer code Windows. Join the movement. Migrate your data to the cloud. I've realized over time, it isn't really so much explaining to the boss why we shouldn't be using Amazon or Microsoft or Google. It's really explaining to the boss why we shouldn't be buying more hard drives. That's the real, that's the real benefit. Wasabi.com. And the offer code is Windows. Thank you, Wasabi, for supporting Windows Weekly. Um... Did we did we spend so much time on feature packs? Did we did we cover all the Windows 10 news? Is there <laughs> no, more? we get a little a couple more. Of all right, H2 related items. 22 H2 22. Two. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Surprised you can't keep this straight. Um, <laughs> 20 H2 really. uh, is now it's being pushed out, right? Everybody's got it. It is available, right? It's been available for Rolling about out. Yep. Five weeks now. Yeah, I have it on my time. Lenovo. My and this is like a three. I'm actually kind of surprised how often it, I've seen it uh, pop up. You know what? I computers. redid the mm -hmm. Surface Studio. Mm -hmm. No 20 H2. It's still in 1909. Yeah. Mm. 1909. Yeah. Well. So that's interesting. That actually. So the the 1909 thing is actually part of the data in this month's uh, duplex report. Um, 
because obviously the focus is on 20H2 to some degree. Um, last month, I think it was just on 1.7% of computers, this uh, Windows 10 computers, this month it's almost 9%, right? So that's, you know, a pretty decent jump. The biggest change, though, in the chart was uh, 1903 versus 1909. Uh, 1909 picked up a bunch of usage, and 1903 is now down to about 10%. And it, that makes sense, because 1909 is a not real feature update that is a minor mm -hmm. update to 1903. So if you qualify for 1903, you get 1909. It's pretty much not guaranteed, but it's going to happen. And I think that's what we saw uh, this past month. Um, is um, 1903 also at past end of life or near end of life as far as support? I don't I can't remember so. when that day is, but... No, I don't. Uh, I bet, no, I'm going to guess no. Not yet. Okay. Yeah, I think whatever the next one is would probably be the beginning of that. But it's already, it's slipping down to almost single digit share. So um, yeah. when it happens, it shouldn't be too painful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Leo, you but, missed yeah, the big excitement last week that my oh. Surface Laptop 3 died. Oh, okay. Yeah, you were you alluded to that. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, so the reason I just thought of it now was when I, when I got, I got I had to go buy a replacement machine um, immediately because I didn't have any extra PCs in my apartment, what? which was kind of That's un odd. unusual. Yeah, yep. yeah. So the PC I bought was an HP Spectre, and it came with um, 2004, and it just updated itself a day later to 20H2. Yeah. So it just automatically did it. Nice. I, I'm, I can't believe how often Isn't it I've funny seen that happen. That the HP yeah. updates <laughs> faster than the Microsoft. That's it's almost oh, like yeah. they know something about making computers and keeping them up to date. Yeah. No, yeah. what happened to my Surface? So I don't know what happened, but um, I brought it into the shop this week that's near me on 34th Street. It's and under warranty. Do they nope, put it up on the lift month, and... One month out of warranty. Oh, so it's a 13-month-old. <laughs> oh, that's frustrating. Yeah. So they, oh. the guys looked at it, and they called me today, and they said, it, short, it looks like it shorted out. It looks like Whoa. you had an electromechanical problem, and your motherboard needs to be fixed or replaced. Oh, geez. Um, so I'm like, wow, really? And they're oh, like, isn't geez. this pretty new? And I'm like, yeah, it's like just over a year old. <laughs> shorted out. Yeah. Um, out of out of nowhere, like I was using it on Tuesday. I went out to run an errand, and when I came back, it wouldn't turn on. Like aye, nothing. Aye. Did your building get struck by lightning while you were gone? Yeah, like your house. I don't yeah. think it did. Because <laughs> this sounds familiar to me. I know. So it. I mean, it could have been a power surge, but I've never ever had this happen before. So that was kind of weird. Oh, yeah, and we talked about this separately, but you you have it on a uh, like a power. I have it on a power like a power surge protector that's connected yeah. through the dock, right? So right, right. Yeah. Wow, that's depressing. I know. So yeah, I get to go pick it up today. They said they fixed the motherboard. Oh, good. <laughs> but how much though? Um, I mean, like a thousand bucks, yeah, right? Like um, no, they said they fixed the motherboard for like just under four hundred dollars. Oh, that's good. Um, With a new motherboard from Microsoft. No, they didn't replace the motherboard. They oh, said they, they fixed oh, it. They, so, oh, okay. So it's yeah. fried the some power supply. Fried something. It wouldn't turn, like, it was weird. Like when I opened the lid, I could see it, the screen flicker the logo for like one second and then it wouldn't turn on after that. Huh. I wonder what they did. So they didn't put a new motherboard in. No, they right. did. They said they didn't. They were going to, maybe but they said, let's see if got, we can fix it. Uh, maybe a cap exploded or something that's I don't really know weird. I'm gonna ask them when I pick it up and see if yeah. they tell me more but yeah I can uh, show you the part like when you get a car and they have to show you the, yeah you yeah. can have the you part I put it in a plastic <laughs> bag for you right it's in yeah. formaldehyde add it to your collection yeah. oh that's it was a, just such a nightmare last actually week. it was consider yourself bad. lucky because you have I mean I don't know where you brought it but that's really good that no I mean, they're they're great um, Nowadays, they, I, most people just swap out components. They say, "Oh, you're gonna need it in the motherboard." Yeah, no. I, I, once I pick it up, and if it works, I'm gonna give them a shout out on Windows. Yeah, Weekly please do. Yeah, they, so they're they not, were really good. Are they a Microsoft certified nope. repair shop? No, I don't just, believe they are. Just some shade tree mechanic, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> when I brought it nice. in, the guy goes, "Oh, Surface Laptop Three, like yes. I haven't seen one of those ever before." <laughs> oh, that's do they also do state inspection stickers <laughs> and? <laughs> I can smog it if you need it. Uh, right. No, a, fr yeah, yeah. a friend of mine, a friend and colleague of mine had, you, had brought laptops to them before and said, these guys are good and they're really close to where you live. You can walk there. So I did. Was it Louis Rossman? Know. No. No. Do you want me to tell you the name? I can tell you. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, their name is New York Computer Help. Nice. And they're on 34th Street. There is there is something to be said for living in New York, isn't there? I know. Because if, if I went to yeah. Petaluma, if I went to Petaluma Computer <laughs> Help, they'd say, yep. you got an XT? Uh, yeah. Is it an AT? What what version yeah. of IBM PC do you have? <laughs> no, these cow. guys are good. They, they definitely, they're like, yeah, let's see if we can fix it. And if we can't, we'll call you and we'll tell you how much it's going to cost. And I mean, they're very... Above board. I'm really impressed. They used to bring Apple products to TechServe in. Yeah. yeah. I think it was yep. they're, they're well known, legendary. They're very well known. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And, uh, and then Lewis Rossman is a YouTuber. But, mm. you know, I don't know if you've ever seen his, uh, his videos. It's hysterical. He's really fun no. to watch because he'll fix, yeah. I mean, he will, you know, he'll solder stuff back on the motherboard <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's probably now too big of a celebrity. Yeah. He owns yeah. the Rossman right. Repair Group in Manhattan. Uh, but he's, okay. yeah, he's, you know, you pay extra <laughs> to get a little, little... Then you get an autograph photo yeah, with exactly. him when you get your yeah, PC Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think you're, I think really, honestly, you, you've got, you've found something that's pretty special. I know, I know. I'm excited. If they work, I I, I, sell, I didn't tell the guys who I was or anything. I'm like, I'm going to give them a shout out on Windows Weekly if yeah. it works. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also, I, I also feel like... Um, that's one of the benefits of using a PC. See, if you had an Apple laptop, forget it. Yep. Yeah. Forget yeah. it. They, they're not going to fix a capacitor. They're not going to re replace a yeah. chip. They're going to say, uh, yeah, that'll be a new logic board for $1,400, period. I know. Yep. Uh, so that's, and even with, a, it's interesting because even with a Surface, which you could argue, well, that's kind of a Microsoft business model. No, they mm -hmm. can go in there and fix they it. They did. Which is yeah, great. Yeah, they went in. Yep. That's really Really they went cool. right in. I was telling Mary Jo too. Uh, fortunately, she doesn't have an Alcantara model because yeah, those right. basically you, you have, have to be done destroyed. Glued. You have done glue. I you know. know. Now there's a good reason for not getting the wrist rest. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. You'd have to lift up the know. carpet. Yeah. yeah. I don't know on Surface Laptop Three what gains, if any, they made on repairability. I know that's been a thing yeah. in recent Surfaces where mm -hmm. you can access the SSD or whatever. Yep. Um, it's a good trend, you know, back in the right direction. You know, we, mm -hmm. we had gone to all sealed up machines for a while there. Uh, yeah. According to but Yelp. I wonder if some part of its design made this easier. New York, New York Computer Help is in the top 10, 20 years in business, five star rating. You went to the nice. right place. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I'm impressed. It's funny. Typical New York place. Like you go, the doorway's not marked. Like right, there's a little right. yeah. board yeah. outside that says we repair computers, <laughs> right? You go in, the elevator is so rickety. I'm like, I'm going to get trapped in the elevator. I <laughs> it's know like it. trying to get to Hogwarts. <laughs> It's a guy. And you come out and you're like in a dingy little hallway and you're like, where am I, I right now? I love New York. I just love New York. <laughs> I just, that's one of the reasons I love it. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Yep. They, uh, apparently they do, uh, they do Apple stuff too. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's really cool. Um, yep, so good on you. Hope. So Cross you're going to, so what are you going to do? Re return the uh, laptop you bought, the HP, or are you just going to? Um, I think I'm. I need a backup machine here, so I'm going to do something with this. Either keep it, or um, I'm going to. You at do least need a get backup. Another model. That's I scary do. to I think. Do. Oh no, yeah. I can't do my job because my one thing broke. No, because I returned right. everything. All my loaners, yeah. all my review yeah. units are gone, and I had gotten rid of everything. I had given family members stuff, and I'm like, and eh, now I don't have a backup. <laughs> yeah, no, you should have at least one extra. <laughs> I should I lying should. around. I am. I'm glad because I, I bought the new Macintosh M1, and I would really mm -hmm. love to use that for everything. But the the one tool that yeah. I really need, uh, because it's you know it's that time of year again. I'm doing the famous mm -hmm. Advent calendar, the Advent mm. of Code. Where it's a yep. new problem, and the one tool I need, my racket programming environment, doesn't work. Oh no! So I for, I fortunately I've got a Dell running, uh, you know, some other operating yeah. system. I won't. Yep. I won't say the name. <laughs> and uh, and, I, and I can do it, but uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so did you return the Duo? I forgot to ask you that, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, you did. So you get you had literally nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> I literally had nothing. I have a, I have my old Acer that won't turn on anymore, but I'm like, I don't have anything. I literally don't have another PC in here. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, thank you for keeping me up to date on that. I, f I feel like I missed out. Man, I missed a lot. One week, you miss a win week and you're... Just... So H2, <laughs> according to you, is... And when I say you, I mean you, Paul Therott, yep. is on a whopping 9% of all <laughs> Windows PCs. 8.8% .8 to be exact. Is that a good number or not? Yeah, it's only been one month. 
Okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. pretty good. Yep. Yeah. This is from Ad Duplex. Um, actually, I'm looking at the graph on your on your site. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest one, the biggest chunk, is M20U, which is 2004. So I'm surprised. 30, 37% on 2004. 36% like me are in 1909. Yeah. But I mean, right. So that's actually very interesting, right? So the, the top four are all of the releases from the last two years, you know? And the top two are the big releases. Well, that's not true. Actually, the top two are the most recent two releases, not including the most recent. So it, it's, it's tracking kind of the way it should, you know? It's what you'd expect, in other words. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know what, you know what he doesn't and track in that chart, though, is Windows 7, because that's still like on a lot of PCs, right? <laughs> yeah, how many yes, PCs this is, is Windows This is specifically Windows, Windows, Windows 10. 10 right. PCs, but how many yeah. Windows 7 is estimated to be about still 25% of all PCs. 25%, yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. So, yeah. I mean, that's uh, that's got to be almost 300 million computers. Yeah. Jeez. Right. If there are a billion yeah. that are just on Windows 10 and 25% are not Windows 10, <laughs> at yeah. least it's probably no, 30%. Paul, do you still get, I get emails like almost weekly from people who are on Windows 7. They're like, such and such isn't working on Windows 7. I'm like, so you know you're mm. not, like, not in support anymore and you're not getting any security updates. And they, uh, some of these people are surprised. Like they're like, what? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, what, when did that happen? So, <laughs> you, you get a full screen warning about this every time you turn I know. On I'm like, how do you guys not know this? Yeah. Really? <laughs> you can't pretend you don't know. Probably there's a Steve Gibson utility that hides that so window. Oh, yeah. And yep, uh, yeah, he did write it with a utility called Never 10. And for all I know, yeah. that's that may, right. Yeah, yeah. That may still be doing yeah. it. I was running that, and my mom was running that too. So. <laughs> I'll tell Steve. Well, I think he made that because they, weren't they forced upgrading people by mistake? They were. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah. For a time. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Got to hit those numbers, guys. <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I get calls. I yeah. still get calls. A lot of them, mostly from older people running Windows 7. And, yep. yeah. and many of them are completely uh, immune to the idea that it might not be safe. You know, they yeah. might not be. They just don't. Oh, people. I know. People will be like, are you telling me I, this isn't very safe? I'm like, that is exactly what I'm telling you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Well, it's okay because I'm running a vast on it is one of, one of the <laughs> things yeah, people say. Yeah, sure. I mean, look, I, I, you'll probably be okay for the next several months. You know, Chrome is supported. Edge is no, there's supported. Been some bad, there's been some bad up bugs out there and like... Um, Unpatched. I'm free, I'm free, right? Yeah. Unpatched. Like zero, a lot of zero days, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> so I don't I, recommend running Windows 7. I want to, by the way, want to report that I have, uh, I should have brought my M1, my new MacBook in because I'm running I know, Microsoft. I thought you would have it. Well, I don't carry it with me everywhere. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I did have it yesterday all day. <laughs> yeah. But when, uh, Office is available in a, a universal binary uh, for the chip. Mm -hmm. And it runs great. It's not, I have to say, this is freak. You know, one of the knocks on Microsoft by Apple people all along has been, yeah, but they, when they write Office apps, they don't use Apple standard technologies. They have to mm -hmm. write their own, you know, they used to, it's on, 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 on System 7 and 9, they would write their own memory manager. It's like, yeah, yeah we're not going to use the operating system. Uh, and I feel like they're still doing that because while every nor, every app, that is universal launches like that and runs snap. Mm -hmm. Word runs exactly the same <laughs> as it used to. It's not, it still takes like three seconds or four seconds to launch. It's still, right. but it, but on the bright side, it is exact. I mean, it's exactly the same. It works. Yeah. So, and it is, you know, it's running as universal. It's running as an, as an arm app. So they've got oh, that. I mean, I, it seems like they've accomplished on uh, the Mac what I had said about Windows 10 and ARM and it never happened, which is that for this thing to be successful, it just needs to be boring. It, it, yeah. Everything should just work. It you does don't think just about work. It, you know? It's just like Office. It's yeah. just mm -hmm. like Office. That's good. That's what you want. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's not as snappy as uh, some of the other apps. Um, I'm sure that you know it's a beta, so I'm that that sure. probably could be fixed. It might have mm -hmm. some telemetry in it that slows mm -hmm. it down, things like that. But I did want to report. Yeah, no problem yeah, installed. It's painless. That's good. Yeah, nice. And I and like I said, I can't say that for everything. A lot of edge case stuff. Yeah, just yeah. It, not only 
not only doesn't, you know, do it natively, it doesn't run at all. Like mm. it, sure. it, Rosetta fires up and it goes, <laughs> and, it, and it just goes, I can't do <laughs> it. You're not, you're not allowed to mention those things. This is supposed to I be know, a miracle. Secret. So just uh, <laughs> keep that to yourself. It's a secret. But yeah. I think I think that, uh, in fact, we were talking about this yesterday with uh, Lori Gill and Mac Break Weekly. Um, there, there was the expectation, well, they've got this translation layer. Everything just should just run. Worst case scenario, right. it just runs in emulation. But no, that's not the mm. case. Mm. Uh, and I think yeah. it's also because Apple has tightened security down quite a bit. Uh, it's it's really a lockdown system now. You know, before you can access a folder in an application, it says, you know, Microsoft Office wants to ask, access the documents folder. Is that okay? Mm. Ev for everything. <laughs> for everything. Yeah, that's um, that's what it does. It's so locked down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, I do need to access the documents folder because I'm making a document. Because I make documents <laughs> with the application. That's the point of it. But yeah. uh, now it only asks the first time, but you actually... Sure. It's just like on a on a smartphone where you're giving permission to access the ca the camera. Well, someday mm -hmm. when Microsoft adds this feature to Windows, Apple can come up with an ad making fun of us for it, <laughs> like they did with uh, UAC, which yeah. had already existed in Mac yeah. OS X for years. This is worse than UAC. This is like yeah, right. You it's have like to per give, app UAC. Yeah, it's yeah. intense. Every application has to be told yeah. what it can and cannot do as it goes. Very much more like a mobile device, frankly. Great. Um, Great. Which, well, you know, that, that's I'm the sure world that's we're part in. Of the point. Yeah, that's yep. the world we're in. Mm -hmm. um, Android apps are coming to the Microsoft Store. I'm so excited. Oh, yeah. Uh, you missed this last week, too. This was a weird one. Well, one of the features <laughs> of the M1 uh, laptops is uh, and desktops is they can run iOS apps. You just, they just Everyone's run. doing it, Leo. They run terribly. They're ugly. <laughs> there is yep. no touch, so it's very weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But they run. Yeah. So... My, I, 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 we maybe we can talk about this. I, I don't. Yeah. The more I think about this, the less I understand why they're doing this. No. Me too. I know. Like so I, let, let's I give Leo the, the background. Point where, yeah, we have enough apps. <laughs> what happened? Know? What happened? Right. No. So this is a rumor. It's not for sure. Number one, mm -hmm. it was from Windows Central, and they said they hear Android apps are coming at some point to the Microsoft Store. So last week we were speculating how and why Microsoft might do this because it's not a definite that they're doing it. But so then this, this week, is as opposed to your phone. This right. is right. actually running kind of like the, running on the Android on, apps on run a system. Chromebook or or iOS apps run on a MacBook. That yeah. kind of thing. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but then this week, Ars Technica did this story, which it makes it look definitive, but it's actually also speculative that said, maybe the way they're doing this and why they're doing this is Windows Subsystem for Linux might get Android support. Oh, no. I know. I'm like, no, I don't think that well, matches this I think that's, thing. that's based on the fact that WSL came out of the work they had done previously with Project yeah. Astoria to but bring you, Android you, apps to Windows. When I read that article... Because even yeah. though I wasn't going to be here, I still, believe it yeah. or not, read the prep for the show. No, I appreciate yeah. that. I put in the work. It's good. Mm -hmm. uh, they described Latte <laughs> as the translation layer. And I yep. said, oh, yeah, I remember yeah. that from Mary Jo Foley talking about Latte. Right? <laughs> or, latte. Or, or is that a false memory? I'm trying to think what Latte is. Didn't, uh, maybe well, Latte I, is the that's coding the translation the Android layer, thing. right? Yeah. So, oh. like, Catalyst... Is what yeah. Apple uses to put iOS apps. Yeah, but why? Okay. So, look, I, I Did, just, you don't you don't I, remember talking about latte? Was that just a fever dream I, I had? So there was as Project Astoria, Astoria that we had, right? Yeah. That, that, let that was you the run previous Android apps on Windows. Okay, yeah. Yeah. maybe I was confused with that. I know people who worked on this. I know that this yeah. team was scattered to the winds. Yep. I know that all of them are gone and they're different parts of Microsoft. Mm -hmm. um, they stopped working on this. It's There's yep. no like core part of the team. You know, it's not like, so if Still they're doing, doing something it. now, this is a new effort. It and is. we know that right. um, one of the reasons it was canceled is it worked too well. Yeah. Because at the time, right. Microsoft really right. wanted developers to make I universal Windows apps. Yeah. Yep. And they're like, if we just let Android apps run on this thing, why would anyone make apps for Windows? Yeah. So the part, the so part why of now? the Earth Like, why are they going to do no. it now? And the part of the R story, I was like, wait, this doesn't all make sense to me, was if it is a thing that they're doing through WSL, like why why would yeah. you put store apps, why would you put Android apps in the store? Here's like what I Microsoft think. Microsoft store. I think it's not that it's <laughs> yeah. using WSL, but it yeah. is like WSL. Remember, uh, oh, really? Android okay. is Linux. Right. Yeah. But it's not. It's yeah. not. <laughs> but yeah, right. 
What if they did a WSL like layer for yeah. Android? Yeah. So yeah, in other words, it's the Android yeah. subsystem for Windows exactly. is what they'll call it. Exactly. Yeah. And it allows the uh, the running of Android apps. Now, like how you acquire those, I guess the reason you put them in the store is because to get what, what are you going to do? Put the Google Play Store in the store, and then you'd have to wouldn't you have to pay Google for that? I, I think. Yeah. Microsoft would, right? You can't just put Google Play Store anywhere <laughs> like that. You know, <sighs> they, they have their own security and all the stuff they do. So I, oh, that's an interesting because that's how Chromebooks do it. Yeah, but it's the same. They own the operating system, so yeah, it's fine. That's an actually an, an interesting conundrum. Yeah, but because yes, most Android I, I, apps, I mean the details of it are whatever. But I just don't. You know, why you, even Leo, as Leo just said, uh, the experience of running. You would think of all the stuff that's going on with the yeah. M1, the most seamless yeah. part of it would be running iOS or iPad OS apps natively because it's the same chip. It should work mm -hmm. fine. But there is an awkwardness to it. And if you've ever used Android yeah. apps on Chromebook, there's an awkwardness to it. Mm -hmm. Even though Chromebooks can support touch and all that stuff. I mean, there's yeah. you know, all these things are designed just to run as a little window, like a little phone window. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's weird. And, and you run yeah. into a, a problem we're going to have on Windows when Android apps come, if they do. Which is you're going to have, have multiple versions of the same apps. We already live mm -hmm. in a world where oh, no. you could have Microsoft Word installed in your computer, but you click on a link from the Office app and it launches in a web browser and it goes to the web version of uh, Word. So now you're going to have a, like a third version of Word. We get no. the Android version yeah. too. I mean, yeah. what, I know. this becomes a confusion after at it some does. point. It does. Hmm. Yeah. So, so that we, so, uh, you know, we were we were thinking maybe the the way. Well, well, at least I was thinking this. One one might think if they somehow merge the your phone functionality right into the operating system, maybe you yeah. could do something like manipulate and use your Android apps from your phone right on Windows. That's but then a lot we, easier to do it that way. But then, why do you put the apps in the store just to say no? That there? doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, so right? here, here's the problem: Android apps are heavily dependent on when, on Google services. Yeah. Right. 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 You can't put the Google services on Windows without the Google yep. Play Store. Right. right. So which that you have to pay for. Not you individually. Microsoft, but, uh, has, Microsoft to pay for. has to pay for. Yeah. I right. don't unless Microsoft and Google are doing something together, this is a well, that, start. That's this, the question, right? This has I to know. be ha has their experience with Chrome and Edge gone so well? That now they're taking the next step and we're going to uh, bring the entire Google Play ecosystem to Windows 10? Well, and here's the other question. hard time imagining this. <laughs> so you asked the question, why do this? Are there apps yeah. on Android that you wish you had on Windows 10? Look, everyone, will, everyone who wants this will say yes to that question. My answer to that is no, not really. What about the Kindle, Obviously, the Kindle app? There There's will no always be apps that are on Android that you can't get on Windows, right? That aren't, aren't on the web, aren't yeah. native on Windows. Of course there are. There are probably millions of them. Um, but Instagram. Uh, well, there is kept, an Instagram app Instagram. on Windows 10, but it's, yeah. Oh. Yeah. But it's yeah. garbage. I don't think you can. Don't it's not you, great. You, no. I don't think you can even post with it. I just use, but, you know what? I don't even use apps. I use the browser to just. Yeah, you know, that's these exactly. Sites, right? That's that's exactly my point. Yeah. PWAs now, look, would be but so much better. But everyone will come up with that one thing, right? I know. The Philips right. Hue app is not on Windows. Oh. Right. I know. Yeah, okay. But I know. you're sitting there using a computer. Where's your phone? Is it right next to you? Why, so, why, why do you, you really, you got to update, you got to have I things don't everywhere. I want to pick the phone up. I am so, I mean, it's the just, keyboard. I just don't, I don't okay, know. Okay, now that you're saying this, what, what if the reason or somehow the background of why they're doing this has to do with the Duo, which is an Android device, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it, they're thinking if they put the Android apps in the store and you're using the Duo, you wouldn't have to use the Google Play Store? I don't know. Ew. Because they'd have to still license the Play Store as I, an Android I, OEM, uh, right? <laughs> I don't... I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out why. I don't think the world why. needs another Android store that's not made by Google at this point. I, agree. I really don't. No, look at Amazon couldn't make that work, right? Right. So, I mean, I mean Amazon has one, but it's failure. still garbage. I mean, of course it's right. garbage. Right. All of the, the, the all the best tips about Amazon's devices are how you can sideload stuff that's not yeah. available in the Amazon store, you know? Right. Um, I, I don't... 
I, I don't know. I don't know. I, and again, I'm still confused by the tip, but I, I'm not saying I'm, I don't think it'll happen because Zach Bowden has a good track record and there must be oh, some yeah, reason. No, I'm not. Right. I, there, I think right? they are working on this. I, yeah. I but think why the, is the, the question? <laughs> why is the question? I, I look yeah. at it like um, it's a checklist item on a bullet, you know, the bullet point item on a, a yeah. slide. It's something our competitors are doing. So both of the major desktop competitors... Well, not Linux, I guess, but yeah. Chrome OS and Mac both allow this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's causing questions. Why? Maybe yeah. some customers are asking Microsoft, how come I can't do this? Mm. You know, I don't know, but it maybe. seems like a lot of work for very little payoff. And it's it's a lot like the M1 mm -hmm. stuff in the Windows world, but it's really cool. Yeah, I guess it, it is I really know. cool. But but what, what problem does this really solve? Like what's the... It's Maybe it's a Chromebook compete thing. <laughs> like, yeah. does it have to yeah. do with that? You know? This might make more sense, by the way, on Windows 10X. It might. You mm. know, where it's going to be on these right. mobile devices, mm. inexpensive. Yeah. Maybe. Chromebook Maybe. compete, like yeah. you said. I That's know. kind Maybe. of intriguing. Right. I mean, the one thing you could say for it, the problem really with iOS apps on Macintosh is there's no touch on the Macintosh. Yeah. Yeah. So it really is a bad experience. At least you've got I, I touch on most it, it, Windows devices. App makers can probably do things to their apps oh, yeah, on the yeah. Mac. Oh, the, oh that completely. Make them better. That's that yeah. catalyst layer. And Right. And so a lot of them probably haven't yet or whatever. And maybe that changes. Yeah, knows, eventually but. they will. But these are apps that are unmodified that just run. Yeah, they, so they amazing. just kind of work. And, yeah. Yeah. And some of them I, work better than others. But it touch, it touch missing touches, you can use a trackpad sort of. But it's not really a good experience. It's just this is uh, one of many things where you're going to get the best experience when it comes from the platform maker, right? And so I always think of this with um, Samsung DeX. You know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. It, it, this needs to be a feature in Android, right? This shouldn't be coming from a third party. All right. Here's mm -hmm. a weird. Um, here's a and, weird. And I, Android apps supported Windows. It's like, ugh. let me throw you a curve because mm -hmm. it is possible to do this without Google's help if you did it with Amazon. Remember, Amazon Fire <laughs> is Android, and, and Amazon yeah. has its own store. You could put the yeah. Google Play Store on there, but you have to jump through hoops. Really, it's an Amazon experience, and all the services are provided by Amazon. Know, but why why would you do this on Windows, though? Yeah. You know, I mean, are, are we comfortable in the fact that here we are, like, what, 40 years-ish into the Windows, 35 years into Windows? Uh, it is what it is, right? It's, it is a desktop mm -hmm. product. We, like, we adapted it for touch and pens and stuff. We have all these great apps. The web is exploding, uh, I would say, with web apps that uh, in many ways eclipse what's possible. That's or, clearly the future. Uh, not what's right? possible. Eclipse, you know, uh, or it, it match what's possible on a native app. Yeah. Um, also, actually, I've, I'll be talking about some of that stuff in the app pick later. But I, I feel like if you're going to, we have all these ways we can get apps on Windows now. It seems like the way forward really is not a rival mobile platform. It's the web. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know, yes, I know it's not every single app. I get that. Like I'll always hear from people, yeah, but I use this one app. I'd love to have this on Windows. I'm like, okay, but like, <laughs> is it really life changing? Is it really that I know. important? I know. I feel like for for what Windows is, for the purposes we use Windows, the reason that Mary Jo needed a laptop is not to run Instagram. It's not to run Philips Hue. <laughs> It's not, you know, it's it was. Word, <laughs> well, Notepad, Microsoft Edge, the full version, you know. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like we're, are we no, really I just suffering? can't do, I can't do work on my phone. It's too small. Like the kind of work I yeah, do. Yeah, of course. And you don't course, need right. Android apps on your desktop. Come on. I don't. No, I don't, don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't. All right. So. It's, no. so it's just one of those. It's a rumor. It's not a credible rumor. Yeah. I don't think it's a credible rumor. You don't? Mm-mm. Well, well, I mean, I, I do think they're working on it. I just, but like so many things, I'm just questioning. There's pieces missing from this. I know. Yeah, I think it has to be your yet. phone. It has to be connected to your phone. That's my guess because your phone hmm. is so enmeshed with the Android right. ecosystem. I'm like, it's got to be related to that. <laughs> and then it all runs off of your Android device. And it does. Yeah. It's just yeah. a window on your Android device. And it's it is. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. they really should so make So maybe this your is phone. a way to make that actually work yeah. properly. They really should make it work. Yeah. yeah. So you've you, yes. you've solved the Google Play Store problem sure. because it's on your phone. It's on your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. I I don't know. It does. We'll see. Or you could just get a Galaxy Fold. 
Yeah. <laughs> and sure. then everything you need is Well, it's right too bad here. like Android tablets haven't taken off or oh, even Chromebook, you know, yeah. uh, two in ones, because if that stuff just yeah. worked. I know. You know, if Android right. uh, apps were so great, we needed them all day long every day. We could, you know, use them on a computer, but we don't have that. We, we, those things exist. Nobody yeah. buys them. Yeah. I know. Hmm. Lisa said, uh, hey, can you return that $2,000 uh, folding phone, can you? <laughs> she said, yeah, no, unfortunately, it's uh, only oh, a two-week window. Keeping it? So we're oh, keeping, keeping it. it. I have to. Yep. It's pretty though, right? It yeah. is. You know what's funny is that it's because of the screen, uh, which is really soft. Yeah. It has to have a yeah. screen yeah. Uh, ca cover on top of it, a screen protector. And I don't, I don't like screen protectors. This one is starting to yeah. get sticky oh, boy. and soft. It's not. It's just. Oh, I really? like glass. Already? I like glass. I don't like. Uh, right. And I guess you can replace the screen protector. Maybe the one that Samsung put on isn't the best. Maybe there's uh, could there be a glass tempered glass or something. Mm. I don't know. I just, I, it's not the, it's not is a that, silly um, thing. device, is that S Pen compatible or is that not yet? Not yet. The rumor yeah. is that so like Amazon's going to kill the note yeah. and make this uh, have a okay. S Pen compatible yeah. and then have a S Pen, the stylus in mm -hmm. the new mm -hmm. uh, S, whatever it is, 21 or 30 or sure. whatever. Mm. I, you know, th there's a lot to be said for having a large screen. Yeah. In your pocket. I mean, there is a yeah. lot to be said. It's not a tablet size screen. It's just a bigger screen. For those screen. of us yeah. who are middle age plus, especially, yes. you can kind of understand yes. the appeal of yeah. larger yeah. things on a screen. Yeah. You know, you can actually see. Yep. Um, yeah. Somebody said I could, I could sell it on eBay. You could. I could it. It's beautiful. <laughs> It's kind of an interest. You know what? It's going to end up in this museum behind me. Yeah, of, yeah, of yeah. course. The, right. Products that were interesting in their mm -hmm. day. In our you returned the now. duo, though, right? You I sent that back that. a while ago. Should I have had regrets? Because I keep seeing, oh, they've just updated it. The camera's better. No. Please. No. <laughs> the camera's better, yeah. All those pictures on Instagram are all on <laughs> Surface Duo now. It's amazing. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm kind of a little bit of FOMO. As I read no. about the updates, but no. no we no. asked ourselves, is there room for another kind of productivity device? <laughs> no, there no. isn't. You know what? Not yet. <laughs> as I use <laughs> this thing, this this e ink right. notepad, I'm kind of liking it. It's like a it's like yeah. a real. I notepad. wish Amazon were, would release something just like that that actually displayed all of yeah. their content. And then I there's a the there's e a desktop app or a um, uh, phone app. Well, that's not good. Press button. Oh, maybe they mean this button. Yeah. There's a desktop app or a, uh, and this exact thing gets copied over to the, mm -hmm. the yeah, desktop yeah, yeah. or the phone. It's neat. That's really neat. You can neat. import uh, e EPUB files. So you, uh, what I probably will do is put PDFs or EPUBs on mm -hmm. here of stuff I'm working on, and you can Have you done that yet? Have you read no, anything on it? No, I just got it. I got it yesterday, so. Nice. I'm just playing yeah, with like it. Yeah, the screen looks beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. and look, see, I'm taking notes, yeah. which I would normally be taking on a. It's like no glare at all. Well, there is if I tilt it. But oh, there's you, a little bit of glare. You see it on the camera. I don't see it. It's fine. Yeah, okay. I don't see it. Yeah. And it's really fun. I mean, it's very nice. It's just like writing on paper. Yep. Which I don't do much, but... It's magic. <laughs> and you have, you know, selections and <coughs> stuff like that. And an eraser. So I can oh, erase. boy. I would buy a Kindle that worked like this if I could. Yeah. Th I thought this is going to replace the Kindle. Mm-hmm. Right, mm. that that that's because you could do all the large format books on this thing. Yeah, I could read mm -hmm. better. You know, comic better. books, whatever. Yeah. Be beautiful. Yeah. yeah, you could do different uh, papers. So <laughs> don't name the pig. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking of titles. Yeah, as no, we go. No, that's good. That's good. All right. So I think it's kind of interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. So. I guess in a way that's kind of the, 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 I bring that up in relation to the fold because. Why not have purpose built? Why why try to do everything with yeah. one object? Why oh, Leo, have... this is my right tool for the job yes. editorial from fifteen yeah, years totally. ago. Yes, yep. <laughs> we, we've spent all this time trying to make a device that does everything. When oftentimes yeah. the best device is the one that does one thing. Mm -hmm. And is it, it really it that hard? Like when yeah. you travel, you bring a little, you bring a phone and a computer. Is it that hard? And this has Wi-Fi built in, and so it syncs to your phone or your desktop. So your yeah. notes are preserved somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I just started playing with it. I, don't I know would want that just as a, like a content device, you know? Yeah. Oh, I know. I think it's like that kind of display. I'm, I'm yeah. trying to put some EPUBs on it so I can see what it's yep. like to read, but I think mm -hmm. it'd be really fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I use a Kindle. Oh, I'd love to I read like on something Kindle. like that. But the Kindle's so excellent. little. That, no that's backlight. That's how you envisioned the future, you know, when you were a kid, is that yeah. kind of thing. No <laughs> backlight, though. So yeah. you have to have a light, like the yeah. original Kindles. Oh. Hmm. Well, just like the Kindle. Yeah, I used to put the. I used to have a little yeah. a light. A light clip. on your Kindle. Yeah, yep. yeah, a little yeah, clip yeah. on. Yeah, kind of like with the yeah. little uh, War of the Worlds head on it. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. The Kindle app on the Duo was very nice. I thought. That's good. Of that was. The, the I the completely Duo. agree with you. That was the app. I thought this is the killer app for it because it had too. a page turn. It yep. was like all they need to do is bring that to. Everything. They should be on the fold. It should be where I agree. You know? I agree. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's take a little break. We, we just scratched the surface here. So we're going to talk about Microsoft. We're going to wrap this up in 13 minutes. So let's, uh... We can do it. We're just whizzing right through the rest of it. <laughs> I'm curious what you think about Slack selling to Salesforce for $27.5 billion, billion yeah. dollars. Uh, it couldn't happen to two better companies. That, I mean. really, that seems like they way overpaid for that. Yes, it does. Yeah. Doesn't it? Yeah. It's a, not only is it a premium on their stock price. I know. Uh, I mean, this is a company that loses money. And yeah. there's been shedding users this year, though they haven't really talked about it. And they're getting beat by teams. They're getting beat by yeah. everything. I know. Zoom. Zoom. <laughs> it's, not, it's probably not cool to dance on the grave, but... no. You know what? But I we're going like to anyways. To okay. Right. Come back. We're going to dance. <laughs> Come back. Grave dancing next <laughs> on, Win on Windows <laughs> Weekly. Our show today brought to you by Bandwidth, which sounds like I'm saying, you know, high, you know, bandwidth, like you got your cable modem guy has good bandwidth, but no, it's a company. Uh, it's a company that provides the infrastructure for a lot of things you use. If you ever make a phone call with a Google Voice, that's bandwidth. Uh, if it, bandwidth is all about, they're, they're what's called a CLEC, a carrier, a competitive local uh, carrier, but they're not local. They, they're all over the country. In fact, they're expanding globally now. And they have a great product if you're on Teams. So I want to specifically talk to companies that are uh, on Teams or looking to move to Teams and want to add a SIP, you know, phone calls and especially 911, E911. And it may well be that in your business you have a legal requirement to do this. You certainly uh, probably have an ethical requirement. If you're really relying on Microsoft Teams as your phone system, as your as your communication system, you need E911. And that's where Bandwidth's duet for Microsoft Teams is the great product for you. It empowers you with software-driven SIP, dynamic E911, and... Honestly, they're the industry leader, and their experience can really help simplify your move. Bandwidth Duet for Teams. I want you to remember that. It provides accurate 911 caller information for Microsoft Teams users. I mean, accurate, like GPS accurate, while maintaining compliance with admittedly complicated E911 reg regulations during your migration so all your bases are covered. It solves for advanced E911 needs, capturing precise location information at call time is critical for your organization. It's critical for your employees, for your staff. Duet leverages dynamic location capabilities with Microsoft Teams to identify the user's location at the time of the call. And it will natively route the 911 calls across bandwidth secure, geographically redundant, highly reliable nationwide network to solve compliance concerns and to ensure the safety of your employees. And after all, that's what this is really all about. Uh, if you're considering direct routing, Bandwidth Duet for Microsoft Teams gives you greater control and value by helping you decouple your telephony from Teams. I think a lot of companies now are just looking at Teams as they're all in one solution, right? You get the advantages of working directly with a cloud-native carrier, one of the best, the one Google uses for crying out loud, including call forwarding, real-time reroutes, all on Microsoft Teams. In fact, you're going to say, this is the best phone system we've ever had. With Duet for Teams, you're going to save 40% compared to Microsoft's built-in calling plans. Now, you know, I, you probably know that Ray Baum's Act requires a dispatchable location. That's not just a street street address, but if you know, you're in a building, the floor, the suite, the room, all of that is required because it's not enough to send emergency vehicles to the ground floor, to the entrance to your office building. They need to find you. With Bandwidth's uh, Unlimited 933, that's their testing number. 
that lets you verify that everything is compliant without, you know, harassing 911. That's that's a that's a public safety issue. And you'll have more than just a provider. You're going to have a migration partner who's really going to help you. You'll have a dedicated onboarding specialist that will help you execute your project plan. There's a 24-7 knock. Of course there is. Expert support teams will accelerate your migration and be with you every step of the way. You can group your users into logical cohorts, whether by location or by department. You can schedule and trigger ports for these individual groups. Also, seamlessly roll back if you ever need to. That's important. You don't want to, you know, go all in and then suddenly there's a problem or whatever. You can do this in a way that's logical, safe, and compliant. And, of course, with the best support. White Glove customer support. They've got a 9.8 customer satisfaction rating. And they're ready to help your enterprise migrate with less frustration and while meeting regulatory expectations. Telecom's complicated. Uh, putting SIP and E91 into Microsoft Teams, complicated, and it could be expensive. That's why you want to talk to bandwidth first. Simplify telecom migrations. Solve for regulatory requirements with a single cloud-native carrier bandwidth duet for Microsoft Teams. I want you to let them know you saw it here, okay? Request your proof of concept, bandwidth.com slash WW. That's the signal. They go, oh, look, bandwidth. <laughs> they do listen to Windows Weekly. Bandwidth.com slash WW. I talked to the bandwidth folks. They were really excited about being on with Paul and Mary Jo because they thought, yeah, we're going to talk to the people who really need this the most. Bandwidth's duet for Microsoft Teams. It's at bandwidth.com slash WW. Thank you, Ben, with, uh, for your support. Uh, on another show, we'll talk a little bit more about how all the different companies Bandwidth does this for. It's pretty impressive. All right, Microsoft. <laughs> what's the gang sign? Three, six, five. <laughs> uh, what's the latest with Microsoft? Three, six, five. <laughs> well, speaking of Teams. Yes. Um, Microsoft announced yesterday, and I, I wonder... If they announced this yesterday because they knew the Slack mm -hmm. Salesforce thing was about to happen. But they made this big announcement of all the additional new calling capabilities <laughs> they're adding to Teams. They just <laughs> love rubbing it in Stuart Butterfield's face. Kind of. Face. I, I know. <laughs> but you know what? Be, be, I'm 27 million go nuts. He's, he's laughing all the way to the bank now, right? Yeah. Stuart Butterfield? Yeah, he yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, but the things they did announce are pretty good. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of calling capabilities already built into Teams. That's already there we just uh, under about. various plans. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now they're adding things like CarPlay support to Teams. What? <laughs> I know. Oh, I know. thank God I can finally join that conference call in my exactly. car. Exactly. You know what? People need to do that, right? Especially... Like, yeah. During the pandemic, lot, when some honest. people are driving around, yep. and you would, and you can use Siri with it, of course. Um, they had all these other features, though, like call merge, the ability to use OneDrive and SharePoint as a default place where you store your recordings of your calls, um, and then some very business-specific features like voice-enabled channels for people who have call queues. Um, what else? They announced some new, that they're working with partners on some new low-cost phones that'll have Teams integrated right into the phones. Um, so they already have these Team displays, and now they're going to have these Teams phones. Teams device as a service, which is like a payment plan for people who want to buy phones with Teams already integrated into it. Um, what else? Call did merge. You, did you so get many. any indication on the timing of a lot of these features? Like there were a couple yeah. that they said early 2021. Right, they did. Most so, of them so some of these, don't. some are here um, yeah. already. Some are early 2021. Some are here in the U.S. only, and they're going to be expanding to international markets. So, um, yeah, it, it's kind of as usual with things so, around. Sometime between the <laughs> announcement of the Slack acquisition and the completion yes. of the Slack acquisition, we will You'll be adding these, these features. 110 features to Teams. <laughs> exactly. One, one person in my Twitter feed yesterday said, Microsoft, just stop. Like, how many more yeah. features can you add to Teams, right? I know, stop. it's crazy. <laughs> well, now that Slack sold, uh, we're a Slack house. I wonder if we should look at Teams. I mean, I don't, there's, I mean, Salesforce is going to change. I, I like really that. like Teams. I know Do this, uh, yeah. maybe that's doesn't mean anything to anybody, but I, I, my little company got off on a really bad uh, footing with uh, Teams <laughs> originally. 
and uh, we use it every day now, and it's it has improved dramatically. It, it from our job perspective, it's very hard to keep up with because they keep announcing new features. It's crazy, but yeah. it is really full featured. And the the couple of times I've had to use some kind of unique features like the uh, recording capability, which at the time would save to a Microsoft stream only. Now they're uh, adding uh, one drive and SharePoint mm -hmm. um, is phenomenal. Like it's the stuff it does is it, it really is kind of amazing. I think there, I think I agree with you. It's improved a lot. I think there's still a lot of room for improvement with teams. Yeah. I, I feel yeah. like it's the a user big, interface, it's, a big app. it's yeah. huge. The, I think the user interface needs to be a little more explicit and clear because I think it's a little confusing when you're yep. new, especially. And oh, yeah, I yeah. think they got to make it smaller and more, more robust. Like the first time you start up teams, I always think like it crashed because I'm waiting and waiting. I'm like, is it <laughs> yeah, coming? Yeah. Is it not right. coming? It's the Microsoft <laughs> Outlook uh, look and feel. It's an yeah. Electron app, right? That's why it's yep. slow and big. <laughs> it does. It does a lot. I mean, it it it, does. it is astonishing. It is you know, it's extensible. Obviously, yeah. I, I think some of the UI stuff's a little confusing. Um, I do too. Yeah. I don't like the way notifications work, you know, and no. there's a whole, I mean, there's probably 127 different options you can enable or disable for notifications, but, yeah. but anyway, it is, it's still pretty amazing. Yeah. <sighs> okay. <laughs> um, it's, you know, but I'm sure Slack is still worth I'm 27 sure Slack is brilliant. I know we should talk about Slack now and then we can talk about productivity score after that, because I feel like okay. it's such a good segue into Slack All right. right now. <laughs> Um, I like, I, this is clearly a Paul Therat line in the notes here. <laughs> Two turkeys make what again? A Benny Butter sandwich. <laughs> yeah, I said the be Benny Butter sandwich. Know. Did you? <laughs> yeah, Mark, Mark I wrote Benny, the first half Mark, and Mary Jo Mark did Benny the second Mark plus Stuart Butterfield equals Benny Butter. It does. Mm -hmm. um, I'm half thrilled for Stuart. I think Stuart's a great guy. Uh, I know he's been a little bit uh, testy. Of late, whiny, <laughs> a little whiny, 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 whiny uh, <laughs> But I think probably in hindsight now, Microsoft, we, Microsoft, Microsoft. Why does it always have to be about Microsoft? <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm guessing it might have something to do with the fact that he was negotiating this deal and just wanted it to close <laughs> before yeah. before yeah. the pandemic ended. Before company whatever. disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think yeah. uh, Teams and others have been eating into uh, Slack's users? They definitely have. Oh. They yeah. definitely have. They Slack won't even say uh, how many users. users they have. Yeah, right? yeah exactly. Yeah. I I'm think sure. their user base has gone down. Wow. Yeah. Because uh, why would you say so otherwise? I know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, this is a year in which this kind of software has exploded. Yeah. Just not for Slack. Yeah. Which was weird. Right. Like why? I mean. Yep. I guess. I don't know. Why do you think it is? Well, uh, look, I'll say uh, uh, part of the reason is absolutely because a lot of their customers are Microsoft 365 customers. Mm -hmm. And in this time of great uncertainty, it's like, guys, why are we paying for something else? Right. When this thing is built into the price we're already paying and everyone gets it. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it does a lot more. As I have mentioned, you know? though, there is a big hurdle to change. I mean, it's not, there's yeah. a, oh, yeah. it's Holy. not, you know, <laughs> I, if I go to Lisa now and say, Hey, I think teams would be better than Slack. She'd laugh me out of the office. Cause we're right. There's right. There's no, it's not like there's well, so there's much training pain. and there's, yeah. yeah I yes. And I, like I said, in my little company, I mean, we previously used uh, Skype for communication purposes, but we used all kinds mm -hmm. of third party services for different things. Mm -hmm. Um, it, yeah, it took, a, it took a little bit to get us over that hump. Um, yeah. But, but you, know you know what? You can use Slack we're in for Teams. It already. Hmm? You can. You yeah. You could, Slack is an I app mean, available inside of Teams. Oh, it's, that's funny. Yeah. I don't know. You know, like I guess that's for teams that don't want to get off Slack, but their bigger yeah. Uber company is on Teams. You know, so they right. could, could run be. the yeah. Slack. Where Slack app does what teams. we need it to do. It isn't right. cheap. Um, right. I th yeah. can't remember what it is. It's a few bucks per person per mm -hmm. month. Well, so. they also, do, they're not as feature rich as Microsoft and, right. you know, Microsoft built out Teams to be like an operating system. In fact, if you look at that announcement yesterday with Salesforce and Slack, yep, they, they call, actually, they, <laughs> they say the word operating system, right? Yep. Like 
they want to make it an operating system. Yeah. I'm like, yep. Wow. I, I, I will do. say this. Um, you know, this acquisition is in many ways comparable to what Microsoft did with LinkedIn, right? Totally. Um, yeah. As far as it's a lot of money yeah. and, and why would you spend all this yeah. money and blah, blah, blah. But the, the way that they talk about integrating Slack and the Slack user experience, right, into Salesforce's yeah. various products, none of which I'm familiar with, by the way. I'm, I'm, I don't know or care about yeah. <laughs> Salesforce at all. But I, I, it gives me some <laughs> hope that they will try to make a run with this thing, right? And that even if Slack as a standalone um, uh, productivity, like chat-based productivity tool, uh, doesn't necessarily succeed or get any bigger, mm -hmm. that there's some point in this acquisition to Salesforce. You know, the, it seems like they intend to right. to do something with it. Uh, Microsoft so, talked about this with LinkedIn. But yeah, they did. I mean, it's like it just disappeared. I know. You know? I know. So Slack, so I, one thing I can tell you about this is there is there are synergies between Teams and Dynamics 365, and that's kind of the mm -hmm. parallel of Slack and Salesforce, okay. right? Okay. So Sla Salesforce is a CRM company, mostly, like sales and marketing software for those kind of professionals. My first thought was, okay, so Slack becomes the UI for Salesforce's products. Yeah. But what happens to the rest of Slack? Like if you're a Slack user who doesn't care about CRM, yeah. what happens to you, right? Well, we use Salesforce and Slack. You do? Yeah. So you guys are a good cross base. And there. Lisa uses, yeah. I mean, we, so there's yeah. a couple of reasons. I mean, we use Slack, like there's Slack channels for every show. Mm -hmm. So uh, we use Slack for production. But a lot of what Slack is used for is sales, um, the continuity teams to communicate. Yeah. And mm -hmm. and Lisa will commonly use it for a phone call with team members. So we use the phone calling capability. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's yeah. probably l more lightweight than Teams. <laughs> and I suppose, I mean, I have to say there's a certain appeal to that as much as I like Teams and yeah. appreciate all the additional functionality. How much does um, Teams cost? Well, well there's all you can't plans. get Teams standalone, right? That's the so problem. It's, yeah. So it's it's part of Microsoft 365. Well, it's, it's not a problem if you already want the other Microsoft 365 stuff, right? right? And the cheapest subscription is, I think, only 5 or $6 per month per user. It's for the right. web stuff. You're yeah. still getting a terabyte of uh, online storage per user yeah. at that price. Um, it's it's not, you know, since, you're already, since a lot of companies are already going to be using this stuff, mm -hmm. it's it's almost like it's not... There's really no extra cost. Yeah. That's, I think, part of it. Although it would be for us. We're Google's yeah. Uh, yeah. G Suite yeah. company. Yeah. Right, right. Or yeah, I mean, but it. at that point, you might be looking, I mean, my, uh, Google must have something comparable oh, to God, it's uh, awful. Slack yeah. by this we point. Use, <laughs> we use Meet uh, and there's chat yeah. and, oh, it's just awful. It's not good. Well, Sal uh. Salesforce had Chatter, right? You remember when they mm -hmm. had that? And Chatter. that's kind of gone by the wayside. What's really right? interesting like, to me is they're actually very capable free and open source solutions to right. do this. Yeah, but, you know, that piecemeal approach yeah. I don't think is particularly interesting to larger companies no. in particular, right? Yeah. Like, if you're just starting out, it's a couple of guys, you're a very small company, I mean, that's fine. But even in my little, like I keep referencing this stupid little company I work for, but it's... We still use a couple of these third-party services for a couple of things. It's like, guys, what, it, it's it's so convoluted because everything has a different UI, a different way to doing things, a different login. And, you know, um, it's nice to, you know, it, it's not always best to go with the same company for everything, but there is something nice about it when everything looks and works the same and works together and mm -hmm. it's one login. And, you know, and in my, I, I really in Team's case, I have to say, I feel like they've done, they they really have done something incredible. You don't just suck it up and use it because it's free with your subscription. Like, actually, it's really good. You haven't sold I me. I think. <laughs> I'm not sold. I think for you guys, describing your business environment, it makes sense for you to try the Slack Salesforce company. Yeah, I mean, sure. we're already using Salesforce. Yeah, yeah. I, right. And you might yeah. see improvements there, actually. Yeah. yeah. You know, as yeah. this yeah. Uh, integration goes yeah. on. I mean, Salesforce has been on this buying spree, right? They bought Tableau and MuleSoft. They've just been buying companies, buying, 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 you know? And I'm like, okay, they're just buying everybody up. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, hey, let's, but let me go back to productivity score because I think people will care yeah. about this actually. So um, <laughs> this really bugged me, but I haven't heard your... I presume yeah, you talked about the last Microsoft week. controversy of the week. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's time for the Microsoft controversy <laughs> of the week. <laughs> what have this they done week, this week? Microsoft's <laughs> built in a new tool that lets the boss see how productive you are. 
Um, <laughs> he doesn't like what he sees. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it feels so invasive, even though as a boss, um, yeah. uh, I can understand why some are motivated to do it. It does not let, seem like a good management t technique either. Well, <laughs> you only did four emails today. And, well, I, you know, I mean, it just I seems know. terrible all yeah. around. You've only been I in know. one meeting. What's going on? What's going on? Do we need to have more meetings? <laughs> um, so, you know, Microsoft loves these kind of tools, right? Like they have all these personal insights and productivity insights. Like yeah. you, you can you can look at your own insights, how many people you talk to during the week versus how many hours you spent in meetings. You They have the tools to do all this. I never write about this stuff because I'm always like, who cares? These are horrible, right? But <laughs> there are a lot of companies who care <laughs> and right. a lot of people who think this matters. And Microsoft's even selling around this thing called Microsoft Ugh. Productivity Score. This and I tool, should also right? point out there are a lot of employees who feel like this is totalitarian. Right. You yeah. know, and I, horrific, so, by the choice. way, this is one of many... It is. Metrics-based uh, tools that Microsoft provides to Microsoft 365 customers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Many of which are excellent, like the Secure Score stuff. Um, you know, the, the point of it is to provide a high-level view of how your company's doing in various things. And uh, yeah. this wasn't meant to be about violating people's privacy necessarily. <sighs> but, right. Yeah. But anyway, because of all the controversy around this, this, by the way, they introduced this tool in October. This is not yeah. something they just introduced, right? Um, right. They, they announced on December 1st that they're going to be scaling back a couple of the more egregious pieces of it um, around the user interface, you know, so it doesn't actually point to direct directly to users. It'll be more like identifiers based on the device and not say, John did blah, right? <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, I feel like, okay, I, I feel a little bit like this is just Microsoft saying, look, we're, we're listening to customer feedback and we're fixing it. But I was talking to Tony Redmond, who works with Paul and who is an expert in all things Office 365 today. And he goes, you know, Microsoft still collects all that stuff, even without productivity score. Right. right? They collect that same information through the graph and they collect it through uh, Power BI, Microsoft 365 Analytics, Power BI. So they actually have, your your companies still have access to this data, even if you get rid of the front end of productivity score. You, you They still can see a lot of these things. Um, these are there I, 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 as tools. I, I guess right. reading through the blog post, I yeah. sort of agree that the point of this was not to single out individuals, right? The point was to kind of look at, you know, you're looking at a high level view yeah. of your company and yeah. how are we doing here? I mean, what, right. what are people using? Where, where are they spending the most time? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, there's, there's good reasons to do this. It's not necessarily, Hey Bob, uh, <laughs> Notice you're really, doing a lot uh, of meetings working out lately. Here, are you? <laughs> yeah. Some people um, take to work from home and it seems like you haven't. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, and so know. Uh, in yeah. response to the complaints, they're kind of scaling back that stuff. And I, yeah, you know, I, I give them a little credit for just doing it. Yeah, I think it, it looks good that back. they're, yeah. I agree. Instead of just saying, you know what, you know. too bad guys, we're doing this. I, I, it's good they're making yeah. some modifications, right? Yeah. Ugh. Um, Ugh. I don't know. I, not I'm great. not, I'm just, I, maybe it's because I'm an office of one. Maybe because I'm so old school. I don't really love all the telemetry and no, measure no, scoring stuff. You, like, you know, if you've ever worked for a little Hitler, and I have. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> I think we all so have, have I. There are yep. bosses out there who are jerks. I know, and, and you don't want them to have that data. This is you the don't. worst thing you can do. It's just empowering their jerkiness. <laughs> yeah. It, it is. And, you know, it's too bad that there are people who would base their entire management style around something like this. But we know them. They exist, right? Like, they just look Ugh. at the report and they're like, and get rid of this and, guy and, and this guy and this guy. By the way, it, it's right? probably worth pointing out that there is a cultural thing at Microsoft around metrics. There is. And around telemetry yeah. and around mm -hmm. automatic, you know, automatically gathered data that proves some point. Right. And I think, you know, I cover Windows they used primarily. They do stacked just, ranking, right? I mean, this is the yeah, company yeah. That, yeah. Would, that would do stacked ranking, which is, exactly. again, little Hitlerville uh, <laughs> and a terrible it's, management it's right. practice, it's, which they it, abandoned because it was such a it terrible seems management like they practice. Sh yeah, they have so much evidence that this stuff doesn't work. I know. But my God, do they keep trying. It's, it's like the Clippy stuff. Are you trying to... Fire an employee? It looks like you're trying to fire yeah, an employee. Can yeah. we help? Can well, we help? You know, Here's some stats the, that might help. 
<laughs> the yes. part that's worrisome to me is not only do they keep trying, but they're leading a lot of their sales efforts with these tools. Like when they go to a company yeah. they want to sell something to, they're like, hey, look at all these cool reports you can generate through Microsoft 365. Like they're actually yeah. actively selling the capability yeah. to do this to companies. I don't, right? You know what? I don't blame them. They're a business and they're giving <laughs> their customers, at least a section of their customers, what they want. Right. And so I don't, I don't blame them. I know, just like I IBM know. gave the Nazis the ability to keep track of all the Jews. Ooh, it's just yikes. just doing <laughs> just doing business. It's just it's just doing uh, the job, you know. Yikes! Sorry, can we uh, go back to that one again? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I've just broken Mike Godwin's lava 18 times. Um, it, it just bugs the hell out of me because I, we've all worked yeah. for petty tyrant bosses for whom yes. this oh, yeah. is gold. And it I just know. gives yep. them a chance to make your yeah. life miserable. So when it I, does. as an employee, I mean, I'm a boss now, but as a former employee, I guess yeah. I'm still an employee. Actually, I am uh, yeah. for uh, Premier uh, Radio. Um, as an, uh, I just look at this and I go, why? Da, da. I but I, on the other hand, I understand Microsoft's a business and yeah. that's what the customers uh, want. The customer is the boss, not you, the employee. Yeah. Unfortunately. But I mean, this, this is, God, this is such a natural end game for the Microsoft graph stuff, isn't it? You know, yeah, we're collecting this data for a reason, folks. Um, yes. and it can be used in a variety of ways in different places. Yeah. Um, obviously <sighs> they're going to turn their lens on the employees. Yeah. Yeah, obviously. You know why? Yeah. I'll be honest with you. It's because I'm a slacker, and uh, <laughs> and I always would get well, a low productivity score, and so I just uh, I find this. I insulting. just think it's a, it's hard to judge people's true value and productivity by any of set of metrics is. because everyone works so differently, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly and right. And if you're too yeah. lazy of a boss to actually figure out what your <laughs> employees are doing, um, mm -hmm. I right. guess you like might today, use this, but. No, like today in the middle of the day, I might take time to make some spaghetti sauce, but I'm nothing, still being productive because I'm actually thinking about my blog post. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> There's no metric for thinking time. Right. Right. And actually, right. That's not something you could measure. Um, the inspiration that comes to you when you are occupying your mind with something else, that's it's how it always happens. How many times... Yeah. Have you been laying in bed and like, oh, that's the answer to oh, that yeah. thing I couldn't yeah. remember earlier? Or, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the perfect, you know, as a writer, you're like, this is the way I need to open up this article or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. those things don't always sit happen when you sit looking at the screen. That's completely normal. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Completely yeah, normal. Yeah, measure that, Microsoft. <laughs> 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 measure my thinking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. All right, I'm calm down now. Let's let's talk a little bit about uh, <laughs> the Surface. There's a new Surface. Is that a rumor or is that real? The Surface Pro Eight. Um, so these, there were images leaked from. I want to say it was a Korean. Mm -hmm. It was um, regulatory body of some. It was a Korean, mm -hmm. yeah, Korean agency for technology and standards. So it's an image of the next Surface Pro, which depressingly is going to look just like the current one, and the next Surface laptop, which will also look like the current one. Um, that's all we can see. I mean, basically, we have one image of each device. They look identical to the current mm -hmm. devices. We don't know what's inside them yet. Uh, I think on the Surface laptop front, obviously, mm -hmm. we're hoping for next-gen AMD internals would be incredible because the previous gen was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, but the Surface Pro one is particularly disappointing just because mm -hmm. literally it's Surface Pro 8, and it's still <laughs> using the same design that started in Surface Pro 3. Um, yeah. Isn't one of them have a LTE? Some, one model it, has there is LTE. Gonna be, there is going to be an LTE version. But I mean, just so that's from the good design, at least. <laughs> yeah, but there's been a couple of versions of Surface Pro that had yeah. LTE in the past. It's weird how it kind of comes and yeah. goes. But they they created a Surface Pro X that has a beautiful modern design. Yeah. And um, it's and a, and uh, to and me, it's weird processor. to keep selling this old-fashioned one next to it. Yeah. You know? yeah. mm -hmm. Just put so. a good chip in the Pro X. Yeah. Yeah, I you I, know we, now I, that you know. I've used the M1. By the way, I just want to, and then I know you, I'm I'm at an ad nauseum <laughs> on this thing, but it just yes, shows. Yes, we know it's magic. No, no, but it shows <laughs> that you, that what Qualcomm and Microsoft have been doing of designing a chip for power, not performance, and it it is there's nothing in an ARM architecture that precludes both, mm -hmm. and right. I think that I would hope that this would be a little nudge to the to Qualcomm and other ARM companies to make a chip. I don't see why they can't do what Apple has done and make I'm a sure performant make a performant right. ARM chip. And I if bet they, they're trying. <laughs> and then Microsoft could put WOA yeah. Windows yeah. on ARM on a performant chip 
And yep. the world would once again, I think COVID would go away. Everything <laughs> yes, would be better. Yep. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Um, now, I'm sure that's the plan, right? Isn't that the plan? <laughs> I hope so. I don't do know if it's the plan, but I mean... Do you think there's a, a technical reason that they can't do what Apple has done? No. No. There can't no, be. No, but no, I no, think they're so. dependent on Qualcomm, right? Right. And I, Qualcomm I, hasn't yeah, come out I, with a better... Well, this so is, why not, Qualcomm? Get on the... Get, on, get with the program. I think that's one of the good things about M1 <laughs> is it's going to put the... the it's going to... It's a cattle product. I don't know. I, I, look, uh, the M1 thing, only Apple could have done this because they do everything. They do the hardware and the software. Uh, you know, from Qualcomm's perspective, what's the point of doing this on such a small market? You know, why... Well, why it would be a why, big why market. Bother? I mean, if you did a, window, a, a Surface Pro X with an M1 qu uh, performing chip in it, Mm -hmm. Oh my God! I don't Big know. Heaven. I don't know. No. Yeah, it yeah. would be, but so what, Mary Joe wants. When and how? I'm. I'm. Uh, this laptop. I don't. You don't even charge it. You just carry yeah. it around. You know. You know my hatred for Apple. The only thing I envy about Apple is the battery life of all their devices. And I'd love its to performance. See <laughs> and it's lickety split fast. Yeah. I yeah. Really would. And it, by the way, well, it, we're it getting this piece of crap Surface Pro 8. I don't understand what your problem is. Um, <laughs> no, so. it's going to be good, right? It's uh, what's what's in the uh, what's inside. We don't know. We don't know. Well, it, yeah. we don't know. So we don't know the we don't know the specs. I mean, uh, right. we do. We know that in the previous gen they did AMD only on Surface laptop. It was unfortunately 3000 series, so it was garbage. But 4000 at least this year, I think that'll, that'll, that will be nice. Will they do that on Surface Pro? Nobody. I I've not right. heard this, but. Um, but but the but, timing you know, of this is mo the most interesting, right? Like January. Yeah, it's probably a CAS announce, and yeah, then you um, think? yeah, I'm just guessing from the timing. Yeah. But yeah, 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 it's post holiday season, which is a little weird. But yeah. You know. Well, they had that huge splash they made. Remember with what they release? Um, okay, so I don't know why. Yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> No, I, I didn't remember them doing January um, for launch. No, they've never done January. Odd, right? They've never done it, yeah. Nope. nope. No, but everything's different now. So, I mean... Uh, yeah, true. true. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I've already started getting my first virtual CES invites. Have you? Oh, Super man. excited not to go to <laughs> Vegas. Yeah. What's that going to be like? I know. I don't know. It's going to be me in my underwear playing Call of Duty while someone talks on the other screen. <laughs> that sounds no like idea. heaven. That sounds well, awesome. it's going to run on Teams, isn't it? Isn't like <laughs> it's team, on teams? Microsoft is teams? running the virtual yeah. event, I believe. Oh, good. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My nightmare is I'm going to be on a conference call someday and someone's going to be like, is somebody playing a video game? I <laughs> <laughs> and why is he wearing pants? Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's the Why bigger question. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So how are they going to do booths? Because there are, what, how, how many thousands of uh, attendees? I'll t two words, Leo. Augmented reality. Yeah. No. no I don't know. <laughs> Second life. <laughs> walk around, you walk around your house and it's like walking around Vegas. So I could see the keynotes and the panels. Yeah, that's teams. But what? Uh, well, okay. Well, didn't, so um, wait, didn't did Qualcomm a, did do like a like virtual? This. Didn't Qualcomm do a virtual like Hawaii event today uh, or something? Oh yeah, but no, no. But uh, I did an event like this. It was like a Pepcom thing or um, Showstoppers or something, mm -hmm. where it was actually a virtual event. Yeah, they've been and doing. You that. went into yeah. you know it's it's web pages, so you go in and like here's the stuff. Here's how you got you know is mm -hmm. you can download all the materials. You can. Uh, contact them if you want to talk to someone in person or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, like there are ways to do it. It's not, it's yeah. literally nothing like going to a trade show, but. Right. I don't know. We're just, I think, honestly, I feel like this stuff is, we're treading water because we think it's just going to go back to normal. I know. You know, <laughs> and then we can just kind of say, look, uh, you know, in the continuum of yeah. things, in 2020, we had an NBA season. We had a baseball season. We had CES. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, I I don't know. Yeah, I, I, know. I know. I don't know. I agree. <laughs> it's like, is it going to go back to normal? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Duo is going to be available internationally for all you people in France who can't wait. Finally. <laughs> it's going to put it over the top. And... 
likely come in black if you care about oh, this. Oh, um, that's what it means. Now I want it. Yeah, that's what no, it means. No, you know, so the only reason this is interesting to me is some people were speculating because the duo's reception wasn't all that when it first came out here in the United <laughs> States, that maybe they would wait and not introduce it internationally and instead do like Duo 2 internationally. Yeah. But it sounds like that is not the plan based on leaks and information. There's somebody, I don't know this person, but Cozy Plains on Twitter <laughs> has been leaking a lot of things about um, the duo lately. Oh, so, the Cozy Plains. Ah. The old Cozy Plains, you know, <laughs> good old Cozy Plains, who says he's a 17-year-old Korean time traveler on his bio. Nice. <laughs> Could you ask him Ask him when COVID's over, please? I'd like to, uh, <laughs> like to know yeah. about that. Anyway, that seems to be the rumor that Duo will be out in black and out in other countries. I'm not sure which ones. Fairly soon. Yeah. Hmm. 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 I, uh, I've been translate. I just translated the text that I was uh, I was taking notes of this mm -hmm. on my on my little remarkable notebook, and I has a uh, text to uh, writing to text and uh, yeah, yeah. title was Duo Wow in B Hack. So <laughs> close. Like, <laughs> Although it got, why is he not wearing pants perfectly? So that's pretty good. Uh, I, like the font. <laughs> I don't understand that at all. <laughs> Duo. Wow. Oh, I get it. That should be now yeah. in black, black. And it does look yeah, like yeah. B-hack. You know what? The hack. It does. I was doing the calligraphy pen. Okay. Mm -hmm. That explains that. Um, smartphone sales have not been through the roof this quarter. Yeah. Despite this, I, I, the new iPhone right. hotness. But, you know, I think even in the Apple case, like what we're going to find out is those really expensive ones aren't the ones that are selling. Yeah. Right? I mean, I think that's the, um, the and Samsung I think that's going to change next year. Part of, you know, Samsung, we know, is probably dropping the note. That's part of that. Um, so, it's yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's just it's been a weird year, you know. So I think let's see. What was the data on this? Uh, yeah. Decline 3.6 percent year over year. You know, 373 million units still. I mean, it's still, <laughs> still. I mean, more PCs mm -hmm. that sell in a year, but whatever. Uh, in one quarter, you know, Samsung's still number one. Huawei's number two. Although that's going to change next quarter because they sold away their Honor line, and uh, that will put them at least in number three. But Apple fell to um, fourth place. Yeah, wow. yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, I think you're right. It's uh, price. Yeah, I, this is, I mean, this is the, the silver lining on 2020 from a device's standpoint is that there are a lot of really good low end and mid range uh, phones now. And it hasn't been yeah. like that for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and so, with, even on the Apple front, you can do pretty well, you know, in the mid market, especially. Um, Google's phones this year are all low end uh, or mid level uh, phones. Samsung sells a ton of these things now, you know, so you know, it's. You know, 2020, it's just been great. <laughs> <sighs> great. I would say I can't wait to get to 2021, but then again, I know. <laughs> there's no guarantee. It's just no. not going to be 2020 that's in one better. Yep. No. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yep, 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 yep. All right. It's the time, the moment you've all been waiting for. Mm -hmm. First of all, I just want to know, I don't know if you talked about this last week, you still happy with your new Xbox Series X? Yeah, you know, yes. I mean, <laughs> I, I, of course. Um, I like the controller quite a bit over the stock controller, you know, the previous controller. I like the speed of it quite a bit. The silence is amazing. I mean, one thing I will say day to day going from the Xbox One X to the Series X is this thing doesn't make a peep. You never hear it. It's amazing. But... Another thing I'll say day to day is just in the games I play, especially, there's no real difference, you know. And one, of, I experimented with this. I don't know, maybe it was last weekend, but at some point I went back to the Xbox One X and played the latest Call of Duty, and I got to tell you, I don't see a difference. I don't. Oh, maybe it's funny. my eyes. Yeah. Um, I don't no, know. I'm I'm loving that. Because, for instance, uh, so. uh, we're only eight days away from Cyberpunk 2077. The, yep. uh, the year 2020 changed 57 years later. 
Um, and I'm really excited about playing it. And uh, mm -hmm. I was talking about how I could right. play it on my new Mac in Google Stadia, which perhaps is not the yeah. ideal. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to talk about Stadia in a few I'm, minutes. I'm going to give that a shot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I play. I tried Red Dead Redemption, and it plays pretty well. It's not too mm -hmm. laggy. I mean, you have to have enough bandwidth, but it plays pretty well. And then uh, Anthony <laughs> uh, Nielsen said, hey, dude, you got an Xbox One X. The old Xbox, yeah. you can play it on that. Oh, I thought, oh. Yep, yep. And, and now you're making me think it might not be much worse than playing it on it's, a brand new it's, one. This is, I think the gap's going to grow over time, right? Uh, obviously, as new games come out and so forth. But I, and I don't, look, I don't play every single game. I mean, I'm sure there are differences. I've watched the Digital Foundry videos. In fact, th it was a video they did on Call of Duty comparing the Series X to the S and to the PlayStation that inspired me to try it on the One X. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I I don't know. I like the speed of it. I mean, I think that's the big thing. But honestly, from a day to day experience, it's not that different right now. Right. You know. Yeah. I mean, maybe so if you that's... Didn't get one. I mean, don't feel too bad about it. It's it's weird to get something shiny, new, and expensive and have it be exactly the same. Yeah. No kidding. You know, so, I mean, it just yeah, that's depressing. Well, the good news is I can't get it, so I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, that is good news. Uh, and and so so, you know, cares? it's kind of like I'd forgotten <laughs> that I have an Xbox One. Uh, like yeah. I'd forgotten. Oh yeah, I guess I could play right. a game on that. Right. Jeez, yep. it's so old. It's not even that old. It's a couple of years old. So um, yeah, I'm I am excited about the game. Um, but which game? Uh, Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah. Because Keanu Reeves is in it. Ke yes. Yep. <laughs> As we all know, that's I live for Keanu, and he lives for me uh, in my in my dreams. Um, uh, Xbox uh, November update. Are you getting yeah, that on the new so, one? Or I'm, uh, we're both getting that. Yep. So now that the Xbox One and the Xbox Series S and X all share the same dashboard and software, the Xbox updates that come out will, applies to all of those consoles, right? So technically, I guess that's what, uh, three, so five consoles. And they just released the first update that will be applied to the Series X and S, which they're, of course, they're calling the November 2020 Xbox console update. <laughs> no, we have to change the names. Um, nothing major, honestly, but a couple of little sm small nice things. If you want dynamic backgrounds, you can't choose any background you want, but they have a small selection of animated color pattern type backgrounds. Um, sadly, not the Windows Vista one. Remember the uh, dynamic background feature that was part of Ultimate Extras? Yeah. Um, it'd be funny if they had the Vista. I love mechanical. that. You know, that's Sonoma <laughs> County. That's right up the road a piece. Yeah. It'd be fun to have that. Um, but that's, I mean, there's nothing major. Um, I'm trying to think if any of this is all that important. Probably not. The UI so. hasn't changed, right? That's no, the main thing. No, the basic UI is Occasionally changed. they do that. Not yet. They will. Don't they worry. Will. It's, <laughs> coming. it's a month or two from now. It's coming. Uh, it's coming. It's a coming. But not yet. All right. Um, the bigger news, perhaps, is Microsoft, I think yesterday, announced, as they do at the beginning of every month, the games that are coming to Xbox Game Pass in the first half of the month, right? Because it's December 1st. It was December 1st the other day. Um, and is a huge list of games. And, of course, this is across console, uh, PC, and also Android through the cloud gaming, you know, the, the cloud stream. I'm sorry, game. I think it's game streaming. Wow. The cloud. This is a, game a big streaming. Christmas dump here. Yeah, a lot of stuff. Um, and a lot of good games in here. But the big one, perhaps, is Doom Eternal, which is Bethesda, which Microsoft is buying. It's already available on console. But as of, I think it's tomorrow, that game is coming to the PC as well. Nice. And Rage 2, which is another id uh, software game. Uh, lots of stuff. So just a, a really, really big list. It's going to be a big month, I think, for uh, Game Pass. So that's cool. How exciting. Yeah, a lot of games. Yeah. Doom Eternal. That's fun. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to try that one. Yeah. I don't see anything and else then, really like that I really want to play here, but it's nice to have new games. Yeah. 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 Um Brad contacted me about this earlier today, and I, I didn't really read this, but uh, Microsoft, he's actually now written a story about this, so we have a, t a link to a tweet. But um, Oh, sorry. Microsoft I wrote a story about it, too. <laughs> oh, you did? I'm sorry. Go ahead, then. then please. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, yeah, so I saw Brad tweeting that there's a mm -hmm. company called Smash.gg. Which, of course, I've heard of because it's an esports uh, yeah. platform. <laughs> right. You're vendor. an investor in that company, mm -hmm. aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm an investor. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Brad's like, it says on their website that Microsoft bought them. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so I ping Microsoft and they're like, yeah, we did. We bought them. 
Um, what? But the reason they bought them is very weird, right? So it's an esports platform company. So they they do things like provide brackets and registration functionality for people doing live events around esports. Um, mm-hmm. And I thought it was an Xbox thing, but it's not. It's an MSN thing. And Microsoft's going to integrate <laughs> them with MSN oh, because MSN actually has a category on their web content for esports. Who mm. knew? Um, so yeah, this is going to MSN, not Xbox, um, but very kind of unusual and interesting purchase, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's curious. I know, right? Mm. Smash GG. Smash GG. You know, rolls right off the tongue. Everyone knows them, um, but they sure. will now. What is dot, what is dot .gg in a domain sense? I don't know. Good kind of game. Thing? Good game. Good oh, game. Oh, it's a good game? You don't um, know that? Nope. Probably nobody. No, ever I never told say that you. to anybody. Yeah. I usually just give people the finger when I'm playing the game. It's <laughs> good game. Good yeah. game. Yeah. Good okay. game. Uh, uh, um, I presume that's what I don't know what who. No, the, that's actually smart. I'm sure that's yeah. exactly what. I don't it know, is. know what the country. It's been a lot, so, Leo, that's an interesting thing. That, so, I used to play games on the PC, keyboard, mouse, in 20 years ago, and GG would have been something you would have typed because. Yeah. It's you don't want to type when you're playing a game. No. But you right. want to you type something really short. It's commonly yeah, done get, at the end of the yeah. game. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like a handshake or well done. Right. It, no, uh, but I, that's just something I, I used to do that regularly a million years sure. ago. Good game. And I hadn't yeah. just hadn't thought of it because I play on a console now. Like a I say, I send emoticons yeah. to people. Yep. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. G, .gg is the country code top level domain for the Ballywick of Guernsey. Okay. okay, Guernsey. Uh, <laughs> Guernsey, that, yeah, uh, it's not one of the Channel British, Islands. Uh, uh, yeah. Great Britain or yeah. Actually, it's interesting. No, I'm not going to go into yeah. this. But if you ever want to know whether the the Channel Islands are part of the UK or Great Britain or not, just ask. Are they? <laughs> what are it's they a, part of? It's a complicated... Oh, man, I, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember, because somebody made a, a uh, like a set graph, you know, of the mm-hmm. uh, of the United Kingdom and what's in it and what's not. Okay. Um, the, the, I mean, ideally, these things would be split in half, and the other half would be part of France or something. The Bailiwick of Guernsey and Jersey is the other island. Is yeah, their crown dependencies? Mm. Mm-hmm. It's an archipelago in the English Channel off the French coast of Normandy. They are not. Part of the United Kingdom. It's commonly people would say the UK and think, oh, I'm including the Bailiwick, by the way. Of course. Yeah. Don't you <laughs> love? It's uh, Scotland, the Bailiwick. And the Bailiwicks. <laughs> Wales. Uh, and the, the Bailiwick of Guernsey yeah. is Guernsey, Alderney, Sark, and Herm, plus a few smaller islands. I don't know how you get much smaller than that. But you're right. They're former French, uh, part, formerly part of Normandy. Um, wow. But they are, they're not members of the Commonwealth. They're not in the EU. Um, Wait. <laughs> so yeah. even like, isn't uh, like Canada is part of the Commonwealth, yes. right? These are not. They're crown so, dependencies. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> it's bizarre. Okay. Yeah. That's, I think we all need yeah. to tune into the crown later. Yes, oh, exactly. that's partly. You know what? That's why I know this. I bet you. See? Yeah. Yep. And by, oh, that's exactly why. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the bailiwick. I even, I've heard people say, that's not my bailiwick. That's actually yes. a, a I have word. never heard that's that. What they, but that's what Britain says about the it. island. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that is not our bailiwick. It's not our bailiwick. <laughs> the bailiwick yeah. of Guernsey, Guernsey and. Uh, it's like and a wheelhouse. Yeah. Except it's a bailiwick. It's a, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's not my bailiwick. It's not my that's bailiwick, funny. buddy. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, the world is an interesting place. It really it is. is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, let's take a break, uh, and we will get back to the back of the book. That will be your bailiwick, Mr. Paul Therott, when we return with Windows Weekly. But first, a word from our sponsor. And uh, this is actually, you're going to enjoy this. First of all, it's Technology Powers X. But what it really is, is a new and original podcast powered by Dell Technologies which I think is so cool. Each episode of this show, Technology Powers X, focuses on a different industry, and it goes behind the scenes to help you understand how technology and IT departments are reshaping their businesses 
uh, through AI, through cloud, edge, intelligent devices. I've got a sneak peek, and actually, I have to say, it, it is really enjoyable. Let me just play, I'll play a little section of it, uh, and we can talk a little bit about it. Today at New Belgium, the ancient craft of brewing has an indispensable 21st century ingredient, hyperconverged infrastructure. I knew you'd love that. That infrastructure supports <laughs> almost every aspect of planning, marketing, sales, and distribution. This is uh, from the episode, The Beer You Love. And I just figured Mary Jo Foley would just love the idea of beer and uh, hyper-converged infrastructure together at last. Right? I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> There's an episode that you've got to listen to. It's fascinating about theme parks. <laughs> Who would have thought it? But really, these days, you know, that roller coaster you're riding on is pumping data out <laughs> every minute, right? And it's how they use the sensors, the data, and the software to actually... You know, monitor those rides to make them more efficient and even make them safer. Uh, there's one on F1 racing and how the McLaren racing team, same idea. Uh, lots of data helps them make decisions about a pitting, tire selection, uh, racing strategies. They actually have a data center. The McLaren racing team has its own data center. There's one on vertical farming. I just learned about this one, too. This is fascinating. Up and down, not flat, not, not sideways. It's all the rage now, and it really can make a difference in uh, our food production, our food supplies, because the, you know there's a limited number of acreage, but you can always grow a farm up. Technology Powers X. That was Danielle Applestone. She's a hardware on, uh, engineer and entrepreneur. She's a great host. It's a podcast you're going to love. Uh, pick a topic you're interested in. Um, you want to get the whole episode and learn all, all about how a hyper-converged infrastructure can power a great beer. New Belgium's good, too, right? Is that Fat Tire? What do they, what do, they do? Yeah, that is. That's Fat Tire, yeah? Um, I, it's a great podcast. All you have to do is search for, you can just find it easily, Technology Powers X. Get it? The X could be beer, could be racing, could be a roller coaster. Technology Powers X, wherever you listen to podcasts, download, I would say just download the whole thing. Because it's really fascinating. Uh, st don't stop listening to Windows Weekly right now. <laughs> uh, but, take a note. Yeah, yeah. But but after the show's over, you can you can listen to it. Technology powers X from Dell and download each episode today. I think uh, I, I like the idea of, of telling people about uh, shows that they would also be interested in. So that's kind of kind kind of fun. Uh, Paul Therott. Now brings us the first part of the back of the book, his tip of the week. Yeah. So two years ago-ish, Google announced that they were killing Inbox. And I have been death spiraling ever since then. I loved Google Inbox. And I spent the next few months, and it's about two years ago now, 15, or no, two years ago, so 24 months ago, 30 months ago, whatever it was, kind of investigating other ways to do email, you know, and I hated all of them. But one of the things I discovered, and I probably talked about this in a tip two and a half years ago, was that the way I was consolidating email before, which was doing it up in the cloud, where you have all these secondary accounts that you're forwarding mail to a primary account, and then you've configured the primary account so that you can send mail from those secondary accounts in addition to the primary account. Um, was causing me to miss some emails. And oh. um, I, I think it had something to do with um, spam systems maybe fighting each other or something. I, I, there's no way to really know. So but they weren't coming, in, when coming I at all? Them all? No, no, I, would, I got email. But I, over time, I, 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 You're missing in some. The investigating this, I realized that some mail was being sent to spam that was forwarded from another account, and I wouldn't see all my email. And so I thought, man, this is this is a big problem, you know? And so I I had to figure out how a how I was going to do email, but I had separated all these accounts. So now they were all standalone accounts. So I have one main account, which is my throughout.com address, which is a Gmail account. I have a, a primary Microsoft account, which literally dates back, I think, to 2002. It's a Hotmail account, um, which is attached to all my Microsoft uh, 365 stuff, my Xbox stuff. I mean, my OneDrive storage. I mean, it's, you know, so those two accounts are obviously a big deal. But I have all these secondary accounts, my original Gmail account. I have various other Hotmail, Outlook.com, whatever accounts. Um, and, you know, here we are two years later. So 
<laughs> what I've been doing is I still I use Gmail instead of one uh, inbox on the web. I use it with a specific browser plugin that makes it look simpler, more like inbox because I hate Gmail. Um, and on mobile, I consolidate those accounts in the app, right? So they're they're all still standalone, but that you know in an, in an app you can bring them all into a consolidated inbox, and that works pretty well. If you don't switch your phone like six or seven times a year, like I do, so what yeah. happens is over time I yeah. stop putting all those accounts in. So, the the moral of this story is, um, sometime about two weeks ago, I got a bill, or I should say, I I had a balance in my JetBlue credit card. We don't use this credit card, so that was confusing. And I looked it up, and it was a bill from Microsoft for Xbox Live Gold, which I don't use what? anymore because I have Xbox Game Pass. Oh, boy. But it must have been to one of those secondary accounts. And because I probably one my son used back in the day, and it was on an auto mm -hmm. renew something mm -hmm. something, I'm still investigating this. Anyway, I don't have, <laughs> I don't have a, an answer for anybody. Other than the fact that if you have multiple accounts, you're going to have to do some work to keep up on these things. And I guess your two choices are what I used to do and what I have been doing. And I'm literally getting ready to go back to the way I used to do it because missing a couple of emails from secondary accounts is not a big deal. But missing all of the emails from a secondary account, is, in this case, has proven to be a big deal. So I'm going to try to figure this out. I wish there was an email client that just kind of worked, you know, everywhere, but... Um, it's just the, 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 I think the reality of my life because of what I do for a living, I, it's just too difficult. And I think I'm just going to consolidate everything again. So it's something you should look at, I guess, I, you know, you should look at not having multiple accounts. That would be the primary tip. <laughs> don't, don't do what I'm doing. This is stupid. I mean, we all have to maintain some number of accounts, but I get What about I get Outlook it really on the web? Something. No, you're not an Outlook on the web person. Um, that was a major contender, um, uh, no, I know you I, don't the, like the, plain the, old Outlook. I know you don't like that. I do not like Outlook. And by the way, yeah. here's whatever anyone thinks of Outlook. I know a lot of people don't understand why I don't like Outlook. Those people are handicapped. I, uh, there's <laughs> something I like wrong. Outlook. I, mean, I like Outlook. Um, no, no, <laughs> no. But this, here's the real world. No, here's the real reason. Um, if you're in the Microsoft world and you're using Microsoft yeah. accounts, Outlook works fine. Yeah, it does. But I use, G unfortunately or fortunately, whatever it is, my 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 pr most primary account is Gmail and Gmail does yeah. not work well in Outlook. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so I can't use it. Um, yeah. Plus, you know, I'd have to, I, the other thing is I'd have to configure it every single time I have a new computer I, and I review I computers know, you would. for a living. So I, yeah, it's you just, would. Yep. using a web client is just what makes sense for me. Um, mm -hmm. And then I thought I could just be kind of clean about it and use like a mobile client to consolidate accounts. And the, the reality is... I just don't keep up. I have too many of them. So this is my fault. This is me. I mean, I'm, this is a problem. But yeah. but if you're like me, and I think a lot of people kind of are, unfortunately, and I'm sorry, um, <laughs> you know, uh, you're going to have to figure out some kind of consolidation strategy, whatever works mm -hmm. for you. If you're just using the same computer and the same phone for a couple of years at a time, maybe this isn't a big deal. But yeah. like one of the other things I do, like I, I suspect most people, like if, you, if you're an iPhone user or whatever phone you use and you buy a new phone you probably go through some process to bring over everything from the old phone to the new phone, right? There's a, you, you restore from a backup or you connect a cable between the two or whatever it is. I never do this. Mm -hmm. And I don't do it in part because I'm reviewing the device and I want to see the experience. I don't want to just yeah. have yeah. my old home screen blasted out automatically. But unfortunately in doing this and doing things the way I do them, I, I lose accounts, you know, mm -hmm. so anyway. Don't, don't be like me, I think is the tip. Um, <laughs> and then, so the app pick of the week, uh, Leo mentioned Stadia and uh, some, there's some cloud gaming stuff. And this is something I've been investigating um, and it inspired, oddly enough, by GeForce Now uh, when they made the announcement that they were bringing their service to iOS using a web app. And I thought, interesting. I know Amazon's doing that with Luna. Microsoft has talked about doing it for Xbox game streaming. I really didn't know too much about GeForce Now, so I kind of, I looked it up, and and it's actually a really interesting service because it's not really a standalone gaming service. It's a service for people who own PC games that they bought through services like uh, Steam or the Epic Game Store and some others, but they want to just play them on any device. So you have to, you know, you do a thing where you kind of sign into your account on Steam. Let's say you have your game library. A certain selection of those is available through GeForce Now. 
and the, you can then go play them on a a laptop that maybe isn't a gaming laptop or a or a phone, an iPad or, a or Chrome. whatever. It's yeah, it's kind of a cool idea. I love the idea. I've used GeForce yeah. now. That's how I played uh, No Man's Sky, and yeah. uh, it wasn't bad on a Shield, right? Nvidia Shield. Yeah. So I played. Like, what did I? I don't know if I can bring this list up. I installed, yeah, I, 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 did install, I didn't install them, I, but I, I have links to, like, Destiny 2 and Just Cause 2. I've played those over GeForce now. For the past several days, I have been playing um, Far Cry 5 over Stadia. Uh, Stadia is the Google service, right? And all of these services, whether it's Xbox or Amazon Luna or GeForce Now or Google Stadia, they all have, um, they all support, like, Xbox controllers. Most of them have their own uh, kind of, a, we'll call it a native controller, um, I just actually got the, you were, you had an ad for Wasabi. So of course I have a Wasabi colored <laughs> Google Stadia controller, which I think is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, I, this stuff, this is very interesting. I mean, I, there are some pros and cons, obviously you need a pretty good connection. Um, but I've been surprised by the visual quality of these games and I, I've been playing them on my PC and this is just a knock. It's not nothing special. It doesn't have a dedicated graphics of any kind. It probably couldn't play these games as good as they look coming over the services, if that makes sense. So I'm sure the Google Stadia on the PC is probably just 1080p or something. I'm pretty sure it's not 4K or anything like that, but it looks, it actually looks pretty great. And uh, I've been experimenting with whether it makes sense to use a wireless or wired controller, or whether the uh, native controller, for lack of a better term, the dedicated controller works better than an Xbox controller. I'm, I'm still kind of up on the air and that stuff. But anyway, this stuff is out there and it's available everywhere. And if you, like like I said, if you have a PC or another device that isn't what you would call like a gaming PC, kind of doesn't matter anymore as long as you have a good internet connection. And these things work pretty great. I'm not trying to give everyone yet another reason not to buy a new Xbox console. I still, <laughs> I still think that's kind of the best way to go. But the more I look at this stuff, I have to say, game streaming slots in very neatly to the part of the market that right now is being served by consoles. You know, so you get all these people out on mobile devices playing little, you know, games on their um, phone while they're standing in line at a store, maybe. You've got people on the other end of the spectrum who have like these incredibly expensive gaming PCs. But that middle part where it's like, I really do want to play these dedicated games, not interested in a lot of hassle or setup or whatever. I feel like, uh, I feel like game streaming is like poised to kind of take over for that part of the market. Anyway. <laughs> Cool. There's a lot of choices. It's interesting. And there are issues, too. I mean, I'm worried that if I I bought yeah. Cyberpunk 2077 on Stadia, yeah. I'd have to buy a separate copy to play it on the Xbox. <laughs> yes. And that's so, a drawback. Um, each, right. Each of these game services has a different business model, too. That's the other thing. So GeForce Now, like I said, is interesting because it works with other stores. It that's will cool. actually import your Steam and Epic <clears throat> games right yeah. into it, which yeah. is cool. It's not 100%, by the way. Like, So if I had... 20 games in Steam or whatever it was, you know, 10 of them will work through GeForce Now. And I, maybe that's a licensing issue. I'm not really sure. Uh, Google Stadia is kind of interesting because you can get it for free. Oh, there's a, you can also pay to upgrade, but um, you, you buy the game. So like you said, you, if you buy the game, you literally pay money for a game and it's in Stadia. So you can play it on any compatible device and it's, it's actually a pretty long list. But yeah, you're right. You can't bring it to a different service. Right. Um, Xbox game streaming, I think is going to be the big one eventually, but you know, it's, it is notable right now that the only way to play those games is on Android. <laughs> it is actually the most restrictive of all of them. Hmm. We know that's going to change, but as of today, the only way you can play Xbox game streaming is on Android. Yeah. And I don't know if this came up last week. There's a feature on Xbox called, um, remote play, which lets you, play to a mobile device in your house from the console, uh, including Windows PCs. Uh, that doesn't work with Windows PCs if you have an Xbox Series X or S yet. It will eventually. But if you want to play remotely from a console to a computer, you have to have an Xbox One. Huh. Huh. No idea why. Huh. It is weird. We're in a weird uh, state, but this is the... This is, I fully believe... Uh, the, the trial balloon for moving most computing to the cloud, not just gaming. I mean, if you could do it for gaming, pff, everything well, you else know the should trick be is, easy. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the trick for gaming to me is uh, the game I'm playing the most, which is that Far Cry game. It's the previous Far Cry game, the Far Cry 5, is a single-player game. And 
the real t- the real test to this to me would be like Call of Duty because there's all kinds of latency issues. Uh, Call of Duty as a, a locally installed game has latency issues, right? Um, it, it might from a not though. Perspective. It well, might that's what not, I'm wondering. Though, I, wonder. I wonder. If you're especially if you're playing with other people on the same Google Interconnect, mm-hmm. uh, suddenly they're in your they're in your network operations center. There should be yeah. no latency. The only latency is the individual latency of getting the, from Google basically the to display, you. It, just yeah. of the display. Yeah, yeah. And that, right. And maybe that cuts it down. I would think a lot. Would, that would be fascinating, yeah. wouldn't it? If if games like that actually played better over the cloud, so, they should. So yeah. When anyway, Google like, announced people, Stadia, if, they also announced things like you'd be able to have multiple com- computers working on it. I mean, there's all sorts of features. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know if they've implemented them or. It was all blue sky. I guess, I guess the service has gotten a lot better since it launched. Really it's about interested. a year old now. I I did not test it in the beginning. I was not really that impressed by it. But yeah. uh, it seems it, it actually, I have to give them some credit. I mean, it, you, it plays in a web browser. Like you. Mm-hmm. I know. It's crazy. Like it's, it, 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 if the, it talk about making the case for like web apps. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> you know? But it's even more than that. I think it really shows you that uh, with WebSM and other technologies, a web browser yeah. can really be a, a portal to an application. Uh, I think I yeah. think we're we're headed into this is going to be the future of computing. It's really cloud PC. It's cloud PC twenty twenty one. Or they should get on that. They should get on that ball. Or, or, or Windows know. VD as we we've talked about it, which is spreading like wildfire. Yeah. Um, I do think. Um, you know the problem is with Google. You know, do you put do you go all in on a Google product? I know. <laughs> I mean, I know. How long? You know, I, I, is that going to last? Yes. My I know. my main I know. interest was: can I play AAA games on a on an M1 MacBook? You know, and uh, well, it would really change that whole equation where you say, "Oh, you don't get a Mac for gaming." Well, you might if yeah. you could play, yeah, yeah. you know, Stadia games on it. It might be enough. I guess the, I, I hear you on the Google thing. I, a lot of people bring up that issue. Um, I guess I would just say, like, at some point you have an Xbox, whatever, and you bought a game, and it is or it isn't brought forward with backward compatibility, and nobody knows. But at some point you upgrade your console to something else, and maybe that game doesn't work anymore. And if you want to play the game, you have to play on, your on that old thing. console. Yeah. You know? Like, I mean, these things are. I don't feel like video games are meant to be a lifelong I guess activity. You're right. So that's okay. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it yeah, might I mean, not, not be a pro- yeah. like if Stadia disappeared in five years and you couldn't ask, access Destiny 2 over Stadia anymore. Yeah, big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm, look, some people are going to spend $1,000 on a gaming library. Maybe it is a big deal, but. Right. So I'm afraid I now have to go to Mary Jo Foley uh, and see what happens. <laughs> okay. No, everything's good. Okay. Um, Don't worry. It's going to be fast. My next three things are going to be boom, boom, Enterprise boom. pick of the week. <laughs> so we talk a lot about Power Platform on Windows Weekly. And if you still have not tried to learn about the Power Platform, you have another chance. There's a new course that Microsoft, in fact, it was Donna Sarkar and her team, uh, created in conjunction with Udacity. Oh. It's free. It's a free class. Um, and it's got five lessons about the Power Platform. What is it? How to create your first apps with it? App development, Power Automate, and then how to add an AI builder to your app. This is meant for beginners on Udacity. Um, and if you are if you're curious about this whole low code, no code thing, you should check out this class. Interesting. So go to Udacity and find the new Power Platform class that was done in conjunction with Microsoft. Want a tech job, but don't have time to learn to code? Yep. Is this Donna's <laughs> new job? Is, is It this? is. Yeah. yeah. She does Power Platforms evangelism, and um, she says she's still a cloud advocate, but um, this is her new gig. Yeah. Nice. This is great. Okay. And then uh, you've got uh, something about LinkedIn on here. What is this? Yeah. So uh, my code name of the week is Project Burgundy. Ah. Um, and so the reason I picked this code name is it has to do with Salesforce and Microsoft. So when we talked about Salesforce buying um, Slack, we didn't mention the th- another thing that those two companies have in common is how much they hate Microsoft. Um, and the reason there's so much bad blood with Salesforce and Microsoft is Mark Benioff has a rich history of trying to buy and sell things around and with and against Microsoft. So Project Burgundy is the code name 
that Salesforce gave to its attempt to buy LinkedIn before Microsoft snatched it away for $26.2 billion. Like wow. they had a whole effort. They actually outbid Microsoft for LinkedIn, but LinkedIn went with Microsoft and that resulted in him, thre Benioff, threatening lawsuits and like getting all angry about him not being able to buy Dynamics from Microsoft and Microsoft not buying Salesforce. So there's a whole rich history of hatred between these companies. It's the bailiwick of Benioff. It is. <laughs> wow, Burgundy. Project Burgundy. Huh. A little blast from the past. Yeah, there's a whole article in the New York Times. Uh, yeah, that was a good article about from, what uh, happened. F four or five years ago. Oh, Katie Benner. Yeah. Katie yeah. Benner wrote it. Of course, it's a good yeah. article. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And then finally, it's time for beer. Yes, and since Paul loves Linux, as we all know, the beer pick is in honor of that. It is from King County <laughs> Brewery Collective in New York. KCBC, as we call them here. The beer name is Penguins Take Manhattan. <laughs> has nothing and, to do um, with Linux, probably, but it's a great It does name. not. Yeah. No, nothing to do with Linux. But the reason I picked it is after Thanksgiving, you kind of want something lighter, yeah. probably. Yeah. Not an imperial stout or yeah. something really rich. So this is a session IPA, which means it's only 4.9%, very light. So it has all the typical IPA hops like Citra, Cashmere, and Centennial, some of the best hops. But... It's only 4.9%, so you can drink several of them and still not walk like a penguin. <laughs> I don't know. Beer makes me, uh, doesn't really make me walk like a penguin. It depends if the seal has been broken. Oh. Is there some you know in, that in story here? No, I don't know that. It means if you drink too much beer and you finally have to go to the restroom, oh, once the, the seal, seal has, has been, been broken... <laughs> Once the seal has been broken, then you're in trouble. <laughs> okay. It's a real thing. I don't spend Beer drinkers time. know. I don't spend enough time <laughs> in bars, apparently, <laughs> to know that one. Okay. See, we learned about Ballywick, and I, now we've learned think, about the seal being broken. I think I have unbroken. a new title here. <laughs> the seal has been broken. <laughs> it's All a thing, right. guys. <laughs> there you go. Writing that down with my hand. I haven't re you'd written anything with my hand in years. It's cramping up. Mary Jo Foley, she writes all the time, but she can't write with her hand either. Apparently, she has to have a laptop to do it. All about yes. Microsoft.com <laughs> is the uh, location of her ZDNet blog. It's great to see you, Mary Jo. I missed you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. We I, missed you too. I didn't even get yeah. to ask you how your Thanksgiving was or any of that stuff. But I'm sure you I had know. a nice one. I don't want to bring it, it up good. now. It's, it's weeks ago. Paul <laughs> Therott is at Therott.com, his book, the Field Guide to Windows 10 is uh, updated and available at leanpub.com. And what is your gamer tag so we can all uh, <laughs> we can all frag you in Call of Duty? Oh, I'm muted. You're muted. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh. <laughs> I didn't want to. My it. gamer tag is my name. Oh, gee. <laughs> Full transparency <laughs> in all things. <laughs> How about just call yourself GG Paul? If, right. if there's some. Guy teabagging you in Call of Duty, and his name is Paul Thrott. It's me. It's me. It's, who has two? Who has two thumbs? And is teabagging yep. you in Call and of Duty? And is not impressed by the way you play <laughs> this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, Paul. All right, Major. Hey, thank you so much. Wonderful show. We do Windows Weekly uh, every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. You can come on by. And actually, is it 1700 UTC? The, the time zone changes screwed me up completely. Mm -hmm. Just uh, tune in uh, on the live stream at twit.tv slash live. There's audio and video there if, if you're around at that time of day. Mm -hmm. If you are watching live or listening live, you should also chat live at irc.twit.tv. For those of you who wish to watch and listen on your uh, own schedule, all you have to do is go to twit.tv slash ww. That's where we keep the on-demand versions of the show. Or uh, the YouTube channel dedicated to Windows Weekly. Or maybe even this is the best idea. Get a podcast application. Subscribe and you'll get it automatically the minute it's available. Uh, if you are listening asynchronously in, in that manner, uh, then there is also a place for you. Uh, that's our Twit community forums at www.twit.community. Come on by. It's in the bailiwick of Twit. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, you guys. A wonderful week. We'll see you next week on Windows 
Weekly. When is our Capicella uh, episode, by the way? Is December 16th. It? Okay, people are asking about that two weeks hence. Yep. <gasps> How exciting. All right. Just He's two ready. Weeks. Oh my God. It's He's the most ready. wonderful time of the year. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It's the most wonderful time <laughs> of the year. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jason Howell, host of All About Android, where each week I'm joined by my co-hosts Florence Ion and Ron Richards, and we talk about everything that has to do with Android. Is it news? Is it hardware? Is it apps? Well, you name it, we talk about it. We invite guests from the industry on the show. We even sometimes have people from the Android team themselves talking about what makes Android so great. And you can subscribe so you don't miss anything about the world of Android by going to twit.tv slash AAA. We'll see you there.